Cotton Badgers entering Camp Randall Stadium in Madison, a college football team with a deep history. But recent times have been lean. And today, as the Badgers start the school's 101st season of college football, the opposition is about as formidable as you could hope to get. The Hurricanes of Miami, the team of the 80s, a team with a record of 44 and 4 over the last four seasons. If you are a Badger partisan, you must be hoping the slingshot has been loaded with the most accurate of stones. Hello again, everybody. I'm Keith Jackson, along with Bob Greasy. It's a cold, wet, rainy day, believe it or not, in Madison, Wisconsin. And let me ask you, Mr. Greasy, does the earth have to crack for the Wisconsin Badgers to have a chance to beat the Miami Hurricanes? Well, they're young and inexperienced, but I, they're not intimidated. They played the Hurricanes tough last year in the Orange Bowl. They've got uh, some talent. I think the thing that has to happen, something good has to happen for Wisconsin early in this ballgame. And if they're to win, Miami has got to be uh, cooperative and make some turnovers. Now, Miami has had a remarkable record under Jimmy Johnson on the road. A remarkable record, period. Yeah. But new coach, new offense, new quarterback on the road on a wet day. They've won 39 of their last 40 regular season games. It is a new era. Dennis Erickson brought the one back, three wide receiver offense with him. Craig Erickson is the new quarterback. Their offense is explosive. The defense, he didn't change. Still attacking, very aggressive. There's more talent here than probably in most teams in the country. This is probably one of the best teams and one of the quickest teams we'll see all year. So we are about to see one team that some people think can be the national champion versus a team whose hope is to rise from the ashes and become a factor in the Big Ten. The series, all even. ABC's College Football, brought to you by Honda, maker of fine quality automobiles. Test drive a Honda at your local dealership today. By UPS, fast, efficient service to 175 countries and territories worldwide. By Crest, the dentist choice for fighting cavities. Crest with Floristat. And by USF&G. All across the country, USF&G protects your business, home, auto, and life. USF&G covers the USA. As you can see, there's raindrops everywhere. It's wet and very cool. After having been a hot and muggy week leading into the weekend, thunderstorms and rain showers all over this part of the country. Wisconsin will receive <coughs> with Robert Williams, number three, and Tywin Claypool, number two, to return the Miami kickoff. Miami won the toss and deferred, and Huerta hangs it way up into the air, and they let it go out of bounds. So you'll have to kick it again from the 30. So while we're waiting for the second kick, let's join Mike Adamley. Well, Keith, you might wonder what a coach whose team is a solid 30-point underdog might tell his troops before facing a team like Miami. Don Morton, the Wisconsin coach, is a great order. I was in the locker room before the game. He told his team to play with pride, play with integrity, no pointing, no taunting, but play hard and aggressive. This is the day we begin to bring respect back to the Wisconsin football program and the players. Well, he said it may be blowing up a Miami hurricane down here, but today it's Badger weather. We'll have to wait and see. Keith? Yeah, the weatherman ain't playing, is he? Carlos Huerta, who uh, had to wait a while before he had his scholarship confirmed. Native son of that part of the country. Outstanding student, Dean's List. And had a big season last year as the kicker for the Hurricane. So Huerta will hammer it. He is a sophomore. And it's going to be high and hanging up there. He really gets it up in the air. Claypool. Find some room to cross the 20, gets out to about the 27-yard line. There, the Wisconsin Badgers wearing the home red will go to work. Miami in the white penalty flag as we had a little mix-up between the teams following the kickoff. So the officials are going to get some action right off. John Nealon is the referee. Against Miami. Dead bomb, personal foul on Miami. First down. So Wisconsin does get something good, Bob Greasy, before they run the first snap. 
they're going to need some help from Miami if they're going to stay in this ball game, whether it be turnovers, penalties, or whatever. And here they come up to the first snap now with Lionel Crawford, the quarterback. He's number 13, and Claypool is the lone back. Both these teams are going to run the one-back offense today. And the young man, Claypool, who comes from Kankakee, Illinois, is hit by Cortez Kennedy, who is a 300-pound defensive tackle for Miami. Crawford is a sophomore from Houston, Texas. Claypool is also a sophomore. Henderson will be the other running back, but he's going to go up into a slot. He's a red shirt freshman. Aaron Brown there in the different color. Aaron is a true freshman. And Tyran Washington is a junior at the other wideout. They were the ground game. And Miami comes in a hurry. And you can hear the collision all the way up here as Richard Newville, who had to really battle to keep his job, laid the hit on Claypool. It's Miller, Pierce, Bellin, Godfrey, Polzinski, and Raps. The asterisks you see there are returning Letterman, and there's a paucity of returning Letterman on the offensive uh, line, uh, lineup. Do you mean there aren't many uh, Letterman on the offensive line for yes. Wisconsin? That's right. <laughs> Third down and eight. Crawford's pass to the sideline, good. And it is good for a first down. At the Miami 44, Tony Spate, a redshirt freshman from West Bend, Wisconsin, hauled it in. Crawford just completed 38 of his passes last year. He was a true freshman, more of an option quarterback coming out of high school. Morton gets him outside the pocket. It's an easy throw, an easy read. Spaeth with his first first catch of his college career. None of the wide receivers in the Wisconsin lineup had caught a pass before the snap. Crawford bounces away from pursuit. One man from Texas throws it into the sidelines and it's away. Got a penalty flag. The flag's going to go against Greg Mark. He hit him after the ball was thrown. Let's take a look at this scramble by Crawford. Nothing was open, and as quick and as speedy as the defensive line for the Hurricanes are, yeah, you gotta call that. You gotta call that. That's a cheap shot. I mean, Miami has had a reputation in the past of being very aggressive, some taunting and some talking, finger pointing. They've cleaned that up somewhat in the past, and Dennis Erickson has said that uh, he will not have any of it. It's obviously a penalty, and it's been called right here. First down. Well, you, you know you want to hit the quarterback, but Greg knows better than that. I mean, yeah. that ball was clearly gone. There was yeah. no reason for him to knock him down. He's too good a football player for that. You get infatuated with that intimidation. Uh, people keep yakking about it and yakking about it. You get, uh, you get infatuated with it, and sometimes in the heat, you just go ahead and whack somebody when it's not necessary, and they've been flagged for it twice now. So... Crawford with good field position inside the Miami 30 overthrows the man. He had a man wide open, Craig Hudson, and he simply didn't hit him. The tight end had drifted out. If he had kept that ball and kept moving to the right, I think he'd had a man open up in the end zone, too. It's a good call by Morton. He makes all the offensive calls and was open, could have gained some yardage. Some things have happened for Wisconsin, as we mentioned in the opening. Two big 15-yard penalties have gotten them down there. The Hurricanes defense tries to set the tone of the game in the first series. This time they've been caught for two personal fouls. Second down and 10 from the 29-yard line of Miami. This is Claypool. He's got really no place to go. Just makes some room as his quickness got him in between two of the defending linemen. And he got down to the 25. He ran right by Cortez Kennedy, the big 300-pounder who came out of junior college in Mississippi. It was a screen, and Claypool found some help back to the inside. Greg Mark was out there, just didn't have enough foot speed to keep up with the Claypool. So it is third down and six from the 25. Claypool goes in motion. Crawford's there all by himself. Draw play. Runs up the middle, runs into the official. Greg Mark flagged him down, but the official... The umpire was in the way, and it may have cost him a first down. The umpire didn't know which way he was going to go, and Crawford, with those quick feet, 
didn't know which way he was going to go, and the two of them bumped. And so it's going to bring up a fourth down. And in will come a field goal try. Rich Thompson, a redshirt freshman from Oklahoma, will try it out of Mark Mangum's hold. And it'll be from 38 yards. They'll kick it from the 28, 10 yards of the end zone. Snap is up. The kick is up. The kick is good. So Wisconsin breaks to the lead with personal foul penalties helping against Miami. The great names, the classic moments, the incredible plays. Join the celebration. ABC's Monday Night Football 20th Anniversary Special, Monday. All right, Dennis Erickson, who came to Miami from Washington State University, having taken the Cougars to a 9-3 and record on the Aloha Bowl last year. And he's a little disturbed over what happened in that uh, first defensive series for his team. The drive for Wisconsin went 52 yards. They get a 38-yard field goal. They lead it 3-0. And now we're going to see the Hurricanes getting the ball as Thompson kicks it off. It's very, very short. One of the upbacks has to come up and get it. That's Kevin Gibbs, who is a fullback. And he is knocked down on the 32-yard line. The wind gets into this big oval and it swirls around and around and around. And it looks like we might be about half full. That would mean something in the neighborhood of 35,000 folks. It's been very blustery this morning. There were white caps on Lake Mendota outside my window when I got up. <laughs> but the temperature's not bad. It's well, no, like it's in the 60s. So here we go with Miami's first snap, and that is Craig Erickson. Norwegian quarterback with a Swedish coach, Dennis Eriksson. Break back and whips a bullet. Incomplete thrown behind the intended receiver, Wesley Carroll. Here is your lineup now with Craig Erickson, a junior from Atlantis, Florida. Leonard Conley is the one back. He is the junior out of Tarpon Springs. Quick, quick. Wesley Carroll, Dale Dawkins, and Randall Hill, the wide people. Along the offensive front, Kelleher, the tight end with Sullivan, the holder, Garcia, Handy, and Searcy, and they're big and they are very active. Second down and 10, handoff goes to Conley, and he is stopped just short of the 35-yard line by John Banizak. Banizak is a senior, got some help from Melvin Hunter. Leon Johnson joins Banizak and Don Davey along the defensive front with Banizak and Davey returning Letterman. Kissling and Hunter returning Letterman, getting help there as the backing positions from Lynch and Connect. Fletcher, Robinson, Thomas, White. They are the secondary people, and all of them lettered a year ago. It'll be third and seven for the Canes of Miami. Erickson's pass down the middle, off the hand of the tight end, Kelleher. He was open, and the ball was a little high and a little slick. So Wisconsin's defense comes off the field and the crowd, what you are here, gives them a hand. Eight starters return from last year on that Wisconsin defense. That's the strength of their team. Kalal is in the punt. Brad Mayo back to accept it for Wisconsin. Mayo, a senior from West Orange, New Jersey. High snap to Kalal, who comes from Longview, Washington, but he's one of the best ones around, and he can really root it. That one drives the Mayo all the way back inside the 10, circling from the 8, comes back to the 13. 57-yard punt and a 6-yard return. First quarter, 11-10 to play. This is the Camp Randall Gate at the University of Wisconsin, erected in 1912 by the state, commemorating the 70,000 soldiers that passed through this area during the war years from 1861 to 1865. All right, Wisconsin owns the football. It's been put down at the 14. And yeah, let's see if they can move it now. Two personal foul penalties. Helped Wisconsin down the field to its 38-yard field goal and the lead. Lionel Crawford did not look jittery in that first series, did he? He did not. Slides along the line, keeps it, 
And we'll go down just about the line of scrimmage where Bernard Clark, the middle backer for Miami, jumped all over him. And Bernard Clark, one of the better ones around. He's a fifth-year senior, 6'2", 245-pounder from Tampa. There are your top ten scores. And you read them as well as I can as Northern Illinois is giving Nebraska all they want. That's Pettibone, Jerry Pettibone's team that's... Uh, Giving him the business. And Colorado State's hanging in against Colorado early on while Oklahoma is jumping on Baylor. Second down. And off goes to Jimmy Henderson. And Henderson, a 205-pound redshirt freshman from Milwaukee, gets up to about the 19-yard line. Don Morton, third-year coach, came here as a veer coach. Changed it this year. And this is his comment as of yesterday as to how he's going to attack the Miami Hurricane defense. They have an excellent defense. They have great overall team speed. We'll have to do some things with Lionel. We'll roll them out. We'll sprint them out. We'll do some bootleg type things. We just won't sit him back in the pocket all afternoon. And they have already done that. Third down and four. Tries a little time with a rollout, but Mark is there. He throws it, and the pass is incomplete. And you got a penalty flag. They may get him here for grounding. Well, it should be grounding because there was not an eligible receiver in the area. An offensive lineman was there. That's right. Uh-huh. So the referee, <laughs> John's been busy already. The officials, a split crew, John Nealon, uh, Tom Ransom, J.W. Sanders, and Tom Herbert are all big tenors. Andy Presgrove, Jimmy Brashear, and Wayne Cairns from the Southern Independent Officials Collegiate Association. Well, Crawford did the right thing. He got the ball away without having to eat it back there and avoided the sack, but he needed to throw it. He could have thrown it right instead of left. <laughs> Sometimes right. when you're running around there scrambling as a quarterback, you see a red shirt, you don't care if it's a lineman or not. You just throw it. You don't look for Wesley what his Carroll. number is. Brad Brecky will kick it to Wesley Carroll. Brecky standing deep in his end zone. Pressure coming, blocked in the end zone. Ball rolling around, and the Canes have it. Bobby Harden, the senior safety, number 39, blocked it. He came in untouched. Well, he really did this on his own, too. I don't think this was a punt block, as per se, for the entire team. Harden just comes from the outside and gets it by himself. Take a look up here. Harden is the last man on the line. He's going to block it. Nobody else is going to rush. Harden is on the outside. Wisconsin just kind of passes him by. They're looking inside. Nobody's rushing. They're holding everybody up. Harden on his own makes a big play. So the Canes get the ball first down at the Wisconsin nine as Harden gives them the chance. They got trips to the right. Craig Erickson whips it downfield in complete pass intended for Wesley Carroll. At number, who was that, 65 came in to get some heat on him. Leon Johnson hit him just about the time Erickson threw the ball. Well, it was a blitz. They had nine men on the line of scrimmage all the way across the line. One of the things that Morton said he was going to do, and also the defensive coordinator, Mike Daly, was trying to confuse Erickson. It's his first start. They had nine men on the line of scrimmage and blitzed him. They're going to fake the blitz and then blitz him some throughout the day. Yeah, but he had trips right. All he had to do was throw well, when the you ball. have trips and they blitz, you've got to get rid of them. That's right. They got the same alignment. Here they come. And the pass is incomplete. And I think they got him a little confused that time because he threw the ball where there was nobody. Well, it's feast or famine when you do it. They're either going to get you or you're going to get them. Take a look at Harden who blocked that punt. Looks like it. There they are again in the same alignment, Keith. And Erickson is 0 for 4. Hand it off this time and tripped up Cunley. Can't break loose as Lamar White, the corner from that side, came looping in and got just enough of him. And so the Wisconsin defense hangs in. And the Canes will go for three. Good defensive series for Wisconsin. Backed up on a crucial punt block. They come after Erickson three times and get away with it. Huerta is in the try. 27-yarder. Kalal, the punter, is the holder. Mike Azer is the snapper. 
28 yards to make it. He was 21 out of 24 inside the 50 last year. Good leg on him, and it's good. And so at 8 minutes and 45 seconds to go in the first quarter, we're tied at 3. This is Roger Twyville in New York, Virginia, paying a visit to 12th-ranked Penn State. The Cavaliers coming off that drubbing against Notre Dame really bounce back today. A 24-yard touchdown pass from Sean Moore to Herman Moore, and the Cavaliers upset Penn State 14-6. Now back to Keith Jackson. There's a papa up here sitting alongside of me who has a son who's a member of that Virginia football team. <laughs> Well, they're smiling today. Again, they were, weren't smiling a couple weeks ago. Miami will kick it off from the 35 now. Very light rain, but it's getting everything wet. With eight minutes and 45 seconds to go in the first quarter. It's a tie game at three. Deep kick out of the end zone by Huerta. So the Wisconsin Badgers got on the board first. Will come up first down at their own 20. It's a pretty good defensive team, and it's a Big Ten defensive team, which means you're not going to probably come in here and just run over them arbitrarily. You just don't assume that because historically you don't do that. Well, they're not going to sit back and let you attack them either. No. They're coming after you some, and that's what Wisconsin did by doing some safety blitzing on that last series. One back offense for both teams today. Claypool is the lone back. Anxiety on the part of the left side of the offensive front. like it was number 81 Craig Hudson the tight end who jumped before the snap so that'll cost them five and move the ball back to the 15 yard line where it'll be first down and 15. Keith both teams are one back offenses but obviously a big difference Miami one back and three wide receivers Wisconsin one back usually two tight ends and two wides they want to run the ball from that one back and Miami wants to be like 50-50 Double wide, as you see, top of the picture now on first and 15 with Claypool going in motion. Crawford gets it down the middle. The pass is caught at about the 19, 18, 19 yard line by the tight end, Kerry Miller. And Crawford did the right thing because Mark was coming up the middle like a fallen tree. Clark, 57, nickname is Tiger, is really the key to that Miami defense. They've got so much speed and quickness, they have to, they try to contain everything into the middle linebacker and Clark should be the leading tackler on the ball club. Ole Miss beats Florida. Ole Miss has won two in a row. Opening against the Memphis State. Crawford, a little draw play. Clay Poole, good change of direction. Out to the 21-yard line. So now they come up on third down and along because remember they got dinged five yards for the illegal procedure. You want a quarterback that can run around, has played the veer, and can play almost any kind of an offense for you. I guess the place to go is Texas. Texas. <laughs> See if they got That's him down where there. Crawford right? is from. Yep. And, uh, the strength is not his passing. I was talking to him yesterday, though. He says he's working on it and is willing to try to work hard and improve on it. Third down and nine. Trying to set up a screen, and it is incomplete, and it's almost intercepted by Greg Mark. I think Greg smelled that one coming because uh, he saw Claypool circle. He saw the quarterback keep dropping. And he saw uh, Russell Maryland going in deep after him along with Jimmy Jones. So Mark puts up a hand, and lo and behold, there was, look what I found. Smart play by Mark. He saw there was enough pressure on the quarterback. Why should he continue to chase him? Recognized it as a screen and almost picked it off. Brad Brecky well, had his first one blocked. Gets this one out of there and didn't get all of it. But let's see about the bounce. It takes a pretty good bounce for Wisconsin as Carroll picks it up and finds a hole. And the punter, Brecky, keeps him from the touchdown. Junior out of Stevens Point. Got him pinned on the sidelines. Otherwise, Carroll is gone. 41-yard punt, but a 31-yard return. Wesley Carroll, one of the big, big surprises on this ball club. Junior college transfer just came into the University of Miami in the spring, and Dennis Erickson said he has been the biggest surprise uh, since he has gotten there. Says he's going to break one of these punts one of these days, and he almost breaks this one. 
with a good punt return and some good blocking right up the uh, seam. He has a second gear, doesn't he? He has an overdrive. You see him change there and swing that leg across and just torch one of the batters. 31-yard line for Miami. Sideline pattern passes caught by number three, Randall Hill. And so Craig Erickson now is in the book for the completion. Randall Hill is one of those burners. 5'11", 175 junior from Miami. Let's pause five seconds right here so our ABC stations can identify themselves. Second down four from the Wisconsin 25. Conley. Ridden down for a loss. Brendan Lynch, a sophomore from Hinsdale, Illinois, leads the defensive charge for the Badgers, and they deck him at the 26. Go oh, make it third and five, and the Badgers come up showing blitz. Keeps on, batted down, good play. Number 21, Lamar White. So the quarterback looping from outside, slaps that ball down. Good defensive play. Here's White, the corner over here. Now you look over here, it looks like it's a deep zone, but White is gonna come from the top side and put pressure, nobody blocks him. A well-designed scheme by the Wisconsin defense. 43-yard field goal try by Carlos Huerta. And it's good. He's almost automatic inside 50 yards. 6.26 to go first quarter. Miami takes the lead 6-3. been an exchange of field goals based on field position so far in the ball game with six minutes and 26 seconds to play Dennis Erickson pacing there Miami about to kick off after Werther's second field goal and uh, they lead six to three the deep people are Williams and Claypool Werther hasn't given them a chance for a return of any consequence yet it's a ball so hot it goes to Claypool from the eight yard line and he gets it back to about the 20, and that'll do it. Lionel Crawford, the quarterback. I asked him yesterday how he felt about running the one-back offense, and he said this. It's, it's really effective for us. I think it'll keep a lot of teams on their heels, you know, to keep teams from playing us just as a run, as a run offense. And, uh, you know, it opens things up for me as far as throwing, you know, and backs as far as running. Well, let's see if he can find some daylight against one of the better defensive teams uh, in the country. First down. Henderson is the lone back. Crawford gets his pass away. Thrown behind the tight end, Hudson, but he reaches back, calls it in, and gets the ball up to about the 28-yard line. So that's a pickup of close to eight yards. West Virginia got by Maryland today. A lot of folks think that Maryland might be in trouble in that uh, ACC this year. Pittsburgh getting an opening win over BC. Second down, call it two. All Wisconsin. Well, they run for it, penalty flag down. Pretty much the line of scrimmage as Jimmy Henderson is hit by Bernard Clark coming back into the middle. A look at Miami's de defense last year. Nationally, this is. They ranked second in total defense, second in scoring defense, and third against the rush. Holding. Wisconsin just got hit with a holding penalty. On third down, second down, and uh, two and a half. So that moves the football back to the 18 of the Badgers. 
Their opening possession, they moved down field 30 yards uh, on personal foul penalties against Miami. And an additional five-yard penalty against Guerta, kicking the ball out of bounds on the kickoff. So now they're backed up at second down, 12. After the penalty. Crawford has a little time. Buys some more. Mark gets after him. Better hurry. Gets it off down the side. Good. No, he dropped it. The receiver was downfield on the sideline. Jim Bourne, number 84, it looked like, and uh, was sliding down, and they hit him right in the stomach. Looks like Schaefer. Came out. Yeah, it looks like Schaefer was the man who drops it. Take a look at the pass protection. Kennedy, 96, going against Bell in 75. That'd be a good matchup all day, both weighing 300 pounds. And the smaller and quicker Mark, 94, puts the pressure on him. This was a good enough throw by Crawford. The ball just came out as he was trying to catch the football. Crawford rolling again, buying some time, gets his pass away into traffic. Who's got it? Incomplete. Almost intercepted by Roland Smith, the cornerback. So they're lucky that that one wasn't picked up. 20th anniversary special of ABC's Monday Night Football at 8 o'clock, 7 central time, Monday. And that'll be followed by the New York Giants and the Washington Redskins here on ABC Sports at 9 Eastern time. Brecky gets his point away, and this time he makes his point with a good high-hanging kick to the 40, where Carroll picks it up, gets a block on the corner. One man. And he gets it. Brecky, the punter, for the second time, keeps Carroll from scoring a touchdown. That's not a bad return average for Carroll. 36 yards this time. As we said, Erickson expects him to break one. He's got tremendous speed. He was a junior college All-American last year at Northwest uh, Mississippi as he gets picks up a block right here on the outside and then just turns on his speed and athletic ability. Good field position for the Hurricanes. Again. 24-yard line of Wisconsin. Miami leading 6-3 to three on a pair of field goals. Handoff goes to Conley. Conley spins from contact and gets to the 16. He got away from Dan Kistling, who had a piece of him. Now coming into the backfield or coming into the lineup will be number 36, Lamar Thomas, at a flanker spot with Carroll going out for the game. Well, it's second down and two from the 16 of Wisconsin. Conley again, searching, finds daylight up the middle, runs for the first down inside the 10. Powers down just about the five-yard line. Greg Thomas, free safety, finally got him down. one of the favorite plays of Erickson when he was at Washington State. Now he's brought it to Miami. He only has six running plays, Keith. There's a couple of straight plays, a couple of uh, traps for the guard, off guard and tackle pull, and a couple of draws. And that's all he wants in this uh, one-back offense. Believe it or not, Bob, that's Miami's first first down of the ball game. This goes to Conley. Conley's going to get thrown out of bounds over there around the three. And there's a penalty play. about the penalty face mask inadvertent called against Wisconsin Purdue has gone ahead of Miami Ohio by 10 but uh, Gene Calhoun the supervisor of officials came in and told us uh, a little while ago five yards and a part of the defense they had a horrendous electrical score over there and had to suspend their activities for a time Thunderstorms and cells everywhere in this part of the mm -hmm. country today. All right, the penalty moves the ball just short of the one for Miami. Conley is the one back behind Erickson. He's got the ball, dives for the goal line, and he stops short. It'll be 
be second down and goal for Miami. That face mask call and the half the distance putting the ball down near the one which gave them the first and goal circumstance. This area, I think, Keith, it's tough to run a one back off. You just don't have a lead back in front of your ball carrier. Well, I think Conley hit that stack that time with about as much velocity as possible, and he just simply couldn't track it. I like the one-back offense, three wide receivers, because it spreads the field horizontally, as you see the players' plays being sent in. It spreads the field horizontally, and you also spread out the defense. But when you're down there inside the five-yard line, I like the two backs if you're going to run the football. Third and goal and a foot. Fine, it's calling for it, but I don't see anybody wearing a spot shirt putting up the arms yet. <laughs> you got Randall Hill, number three, Kelleher, 88. They're all trying to get in, get in a new profession. Touchdown, Miami. Well, it wasn't clear cut. They had to dig to the bottom of the pile before John Leland, the referee, could finally sort it out and determine that he had indeed penetrated the plain and so we have our first touchdown scored by Leonard Conley it's Greg Smith there the assistant head coach and offensive line coach for the Hurricanes Puerta for the extra point it's good 13 to 3 Miami leads Wisconsin 241 to go in the first quarter and here's Roger Twybell Thanks, Keith. Season opener for the Huskies at the University of Washington against Texas A&M. This in the first quarter, Kerry Conklin, 22 yards on the touchdown pass to Mario Bailey, and the Huskies lead the Aggies 7-0. Meanwhile, at the U.S. Open Tennis Championships at Flushing Meadow, Steffi Graf beats Martina Navratilova in straight sets. Now back to Keith. Hey, Roger. I've got a feeling the Washington Huskies are going to be a factor in the Pac-10 this year. So, Don James uh, doesn't stay quiet. He has that habit of being maybe a little quiet for three years and then boom. Mm -hmm. He's got some good talent. We saw it last year. Your starting field position will give you some idea as to why the score right now is 13 to 3. There's Conley who just punched into the end zone. But Miami has been starting field position has been on the Wisconsin 33. While Wisconsin's starting field position has been on their own 20. And this is pops off the chest of Claypool. He picks it up, and this time they will start just over the 14. So Miami having its way here in, in, in the first quarter. Even though there hasn't been anything really dramatic other than the two punt returns by Carroll. Well, those are the two big plays uh, that have really given Miami great field position. And uh, Miami's not doing it with their offense so much as with their special teams. Yep, special teams. That's what I was talking about. Yeah. So call it the 15-yard line for the Badgers. Claypool is the lone back. And he runs in there for four up to about the 19. Willis Pegues, a senior out of Miami, brings him down. The defensive front for the Canes, 245, 265, 300 when Kennedy is in, 260 when Jones is in. And uh, Greg Mark weighs in at 245. And that is a veteran group this year, Keith. Seven seniors and three juniors on that defensive unit for the Hurricanes. No seniors on the offensive squad for Wisconsin. Offense. Second down and six. Jimmy Henderson finds a little bit of room, gets up to the 22. Just over the 22. They got to go to the 25 to get to their first down. So Richard Newbill steps in. Darren Smith, a redshirt freshman, has had heat on him the whole fall training season. Notre Dame and Michigan idle this week, but we'll have them for you next Saturday from Ann Arbor. And they may set a new attendance record over there. Colorado State always gives Colorado fits. So the Buffs, they outplayed him last year, but the Buffs finally won the ball game. Jimmy Henderson tries to find some room on the right side of the line, and there just isn't any on that running play, and so it brings up fourth down, and the Badgers will have to punt it again. You're not going to make a living running those kind of plays <laughs> against Miami. Not against Miami. You know, they've lost some 
people from last year, but 16 of their top 22 defensive players return, and uh, they didn't change anything on that defense. Brad Brecky gets his punt off. Didn't get that one. He's, hit. He's one for three now, but he gets a good bounce on it. And for a change, uh, Carroll doesn't have his hands on it. He's not able to return it. And so for a change, the Hurricanes are going to have to go to work on their side of the field. It'll be first down, Miami just short of their own 45-yard line with the roll that was a 43-yarder. Time remaining in the first quarter, 48 seconds. 13 to 3, the Hurricanes lead it. Shannon Crowell, a junior running back out of Atlanta, Georgia. There, fake to him. Trey Garrickson keeps it, pumps it down the sideline. The pass just a little too long intended for Dennis Kelleher, the tight end. Trey Garrickson is one for seven so far in this first quarter. And the reason he's one for seven is, first of all, because Wisconsin was confusing him early on with some blitzing uh, and made him throw the ball quickly. Now the coverage is pretty good. When he threw that ball to Kelleher, Kelleher was like the, the fourth guy he looked at. Second and ten. Zip one in and off the numbers of Randall Hill. Can't throw it any better than that. I mean, he hit him right on the three. Well, last year, when these two teams played in the Orange Bowl in Miami, Wisconsin was very tough defensively, popped them several times, and in fact had seven turnovers that were caused by hard hits uh, by the defense of uh, Wisconsin. Turned the ball over six times, and they kept them in the ball game. Third down and ten. Put Craig Erickson on the seat of his britches. Well, again, they continue to come after Erickson. Here's the safety right here on the safety blitz. The linebacker on this side is going to blitz also. Everybody is, somebody is coming on every play. Man-to-man -man coverage in the secondary. Now, that's ideal one-on-one -on -one coverage with no help if you've got time to throw it. Kalal is in the punt, gets a high snap. It's almost blocked, but he gets it out of there, and he knocks it all the way to the end zone. So he's uh, improved tremendously. Yeah, that 38-plus uh, uh, average he showed from last year, a little deceptive, too, because we saw him hit some bullets a year ago. And it looked like he's holding that thigh. He's Doesn't. had a problem. He hadn't kicked a lot in the uh, preseason. Mike Adamley. As we look at Wisconsin on offense, talking to their offensive coordinator, Pat Simmers, he said that their running backs, Henderson and Claypool, had to have a big day. But what's happening on their offensive line, they're making the initial contact with their blocks, but Miami's defensive line just too quick, and that seems to be the story so far. Leon Hunt is the setback. Lionel Crawford's pass caught up across the 25 at the 26. Good for a six-yard pickup. Tony Spaeth made the catch. Spaeth's second catch of the ball game. Faith, just a freshman. There are four freshman starters on the Wisconsin offense. One, a true freshman. Into the quarter, second down and four coming up to the Badgers. Miami leads by 10. And Badgers holding the football first down at their own 26 yard line. Miami leading in the ball game 13 to 3. Miami dominant in the first quarter. But the Wisconsin defense, pretty good accounting of itself. Hyman Claypool, going back, double wide for Wisconsin. Lionel Crawford, the quarterback, gives to Claypool. Claypool stops, short of the line of scrimmage. He's going to lose two yards on the play. Talked yesterday with uh, Greg Mark about the, the Miami plan for stopping uh, the quick feet and the talents of the Wisconsin quarterback, Crawford. 
I think the key to stopping him is just to keep him contained. When he gets outside and gets a chance to run, that's when he's dangerous. I, I think he's he's probably the most dangerous threat on our offense to us, and uh, I think containing him is the key. And so far they have uh, Leon Hunt checks into the backfield now for Wisconsin. It is third down and six. Crawford gets his pass away to the sideline, and it is incomplete. He he threw it into coverage. There were two white shirts and one red out there, and Roland Smith got his hands on it. So he's lucky, one, that he gets uh, to punt the ball, and two, he's lucky he's not in the end zone in the possession of a Miami Hurricane. More that the Hurricanes can force Wisconsin to throw is to their benefit because Crawford is a much better runner than he is a thrower. Wesley Carroll has been exciting so far. Brecky is back to punt. Brecky has one block. Gets this one out. This is a little better kick. When he hits it, he really hits it. Carroll goes back to the 32 and picks it up. Gets around the corner again. And comes back across midfield. Boy, they just can't keep him from turning the corner. Had good coverage. Two uh, Badgers were down there. Carroll just ran out, ran him to the uh, sideline and had it turned up field. Let's take a look at the first quarter stats the interesting thing is time of possession in favor of Wisconsin what that does not show on there are the uh, two punt returns of the, by Carroll and the one block punt that has really been the story of the ball game special teams have really told what went on in the first quarter 49 yard line of Wisconsin Shannon Crowell uh, back Craig Erickson to the sideline pass pulled in by Dale Dawkins, number 11, a senior out of Vero Beach. Aggies have gotten on the board at Seattle against the Huskies. TCU leading Missouri. Look at that. The Marcus folks. Louisville trailing Kansas. Louisville went out to Laramie, Wyoming last week and won a ball game. And now they're in Kansas. Kansas opened against Montana State. Craig Erickson, man wide open, and he missed him. He had two men wide open. He chose the man short, Lamar Thomas, but Doyle Aaron, number 37, was alone in the end zone. There wasn't a Badger within, gosh, I don't think 15 yards of him. Well, take a look here. Now, you see white 21 in the red shirt. He sees the pass being thrown up short. He leaves his man to come on up, but the short man was wide open. That was 36 Thomas. Second down. Conley back in the lineup. Conley with the ball. Conley with the first down as he crosses the 25 to the 24. Brad Mayo brought him down. Good blocking up front, too, for Conley. Both the left side linemen, Holder and Sullivan, pulling on the play. You know what was amazing, uh, Keith? Uh, you and I did Washington State and UCLA last year when Dennis Erickson was the head coach at Washington State. Their running game, they had two 1,000-yard runners on the season using the same offense that he has here at Miami. Craig Erickson shoots it down the middle. The pass is caught by Wesley Carroll. He is from Cleveland, Ohio, having come over from junior college in Mississippi. On the field defensively for the Wisconsin Badgers, number 91, his name is Don Davey. And he's news this week because he is the Honda Scholar Athlete. He's an academic senior. Second season, he has been chosen as Honda Scholar Athlete of the Week, and Honda will present a check for $2,000 to the General Scholarship Fund for the University of Wisconsin. Davey's major, mechanical engineering. Grade point average, 3.97 out of four not bad and it's Kelleher made that cat offside it's Kelleher offside I'm sorry I made yeah. the <laughs> <laughs> but academic yeah. all-american last year for Davey what an outstanding scholar and football player that young man is right there three nine seven out of four in mechanical engineering that's impressive right I wonder there. what he got the B in. he got an AB <laughs> AB didn't really get a B an sort AB, of an right? A minus I guess uh-huh all right, Kelleher's movement moves him back to the 15-yard line. Crowell is the lone back. Look for the blitz here, Keith. Look at him up there. The red shirts. Erickson checking off. Break back to throw it. Looks, shoots it. Fans open. Carroll, Carroll. In zone. Touchdown. Boy, is he quick.
He went past Greg Thomas like Greg was tied to a post once he caught the ball. Never had a chance. Here's Carroll here. He's just going to go down and break out. This man's covering, but in here, there's no help deep middle. This is a blitz situation. You're one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, and if you can block the blitz, these are the nice matchups you get in the secondary. There's no way you're going to cover Carroll from that far off the line of scrimmage. Whew. Berta has never missed the point after in college, and he still has it. And at 12.52 to go in the first half, the scoreboard jumps up to 20 to 3, Miami. Keith, he grew up in Cleveland, uh, was surrounded by violence, drugs, and, and tragedy. His father left the family when he was nine. His brother was sent to prison. Wesley started hanging around with some uh, some gang street gangs. His mother rescued him and got him involved in sports. His mother was killed last year, and Wesley has devoted this year his career actually to his mother. High hanging kick from the 11 yard line. Claypool looks and finds some daylight and gets it back to about the 30 yard line. And let's check in with Mike. Well, Keith, you're looking at the Orange Bowl ring that the Miami Hurricanes won a year ago. It belongs to Neil Erickson, Craig Erickson's father. Shaky start, but now it looks like things are coming together for the Hurricane offense and Craig. A little wet field, and uh, I'm sure Craig is a little bit nervous, but I hope he's coming around now and going to do a little better. Did you talk to him last night? No, I did not talk to him, Mike. I didn't talk to him last night. Well, you've talked to him this season. How does he feel about replacing the Miami Legends at quarterback? Well, it's a big responsibility, and I know there's a lot of pressure on him right now, but I think Craig will do fine. Well, thanks. Nice to see you. I know the whole uh, Erickson clan is here watching. Yes, they sure are. It's a great reunion for us. It's nice to be back in Wisconsin. Enjoy the game. Thank Keith. You. Henderson. Thrown back. Goes in motion. Crawford pressure. Pass. Good over the middle. Good play by Crawford. Caught by Kerry Miller. He picks up nine yards. Close to ten on the play. I'll tell you what. Lionel Crawford paid for it, but he came up with a good play. Well, he did the right thing. It's the only thing he could have done. The Hurricanes had their own little blitz package going on him. There was a hot receiver, the tight end right over the middle. He dumped the ball. Nobody was blocking the man that was coming, and he paid the price for it. But a nice play by that young man right there. Second down, one. Gets outside, looking for his first down. Now throws incomplete. There was a receiver downfield. I don't believe they're going to get a rounding on him this time. The real reads in the area, and there was a receiver in the area, although he was coming back and in a blocking mode rather than a receiving mode. But uh, good play by Crawford to get rid of the ball. That score you just saw. <laughs> the Oklahoma Sooners are not going away, are they? they scored 73 in their opening game, and they're whopping Baylor today. Third down and one. Henderson Claypool now in the backfield behind Crawford. Wisconsin. And they'll get the first down as Claypool, sophomore from Kankakee, pops it out to the 42. And the home folks give him a hand. Take a look at the uh, defensive line, offensive line, the center of that line. Short yardage play 67 as Maryland gets good penetration. But the center, Godfrey, number 52, got a little movement and just enough for the first down. Godfrey is a 250-pound sophomore from St. Charles. Lionel Crawford back, gets his pass away. Oh, it's in and out of the arms of the tight end, Kerry Miller. That was a very, very good pass by Crawford. The problem that Miller had with it is Crawford had dropped it right in between defenders and uh, one of the man in front of him was waving his arms and he just didn't catch it. That's good, good play as we look at the pass rush of Greg Mark. Good play by Mark. That time he, uh, you know, he didn't hit him and follow through and that was what, that's what the referee right there was looking for. You yeah, can't stop the defense from hitting him, but you can't just bury him in the ground either. He'd have ground him. Yeah. And he could have, but there's no reason. Up to about the 44, close to the 45. Greg Mark and Bernard Clark making the hit on the ball carrier. And next Saturday here on ABC Sports, Fighting Irish of Notre Dame, the defending national champion, being tutored very carefully by 
that young man, Mr. Lou Holtz. They were very, they're terribly impressive in that first half against Virginia, the kickoff classic. But the Michigan Wolverines, a uh, different kind of a critter, I expect, especially in Ann Arbor. Their feet are losing their feet. So that should be a great football game. This pass is thrown out of bounds, incomplete. Smith of Miami rolling over there to get his hands on it, but he was out of bounds. And uh, I don't know, maybe they figured that's as good as a punt. Wasn't the pass that was destined to be uh, caught. Well, Crawford has not thrown that poorly here in the uh, first quarter and a little bit into the, the second quarter. It's his receivers that have dropped the balls. And as we said, as you said earlier, none of his wide receivers had ever caught a pass, and only one pass had been caught by a tight end. The backs, just one reception amongst all of them. So Brecky is in the punt. This time he gets some spin on it, and he runs Carroll back inside the 10 to the 7. Goes the other way. Look out. 32 finally gets a shoulder on him and knocks him out of bounds for Wisconsin. Leon Hunt, a running back. It was a 49-yard putt by Brecky, but again, Carroll has a big return of 26 yards, and there's a penalty flag back around the 22-yard line, and you see the call there against Miami. So you get a guy who turns on you like that and uh, reverses his feel and everything, it's pretty hard not to get a clip. Well, he just outruns the coverage, uh, Keith. It, it has been raining, and the field is wet, but the traction is good. It's artificial yep. turf. The traction is good. Three, uh, John Nealon talks about a clip. You got 10.40 to go in the first half. Heineken, Amstel Light. This so is much it. better. 1917. It cost them a mere 7.3 million. You built it today, it probably cost you 703. <laughs> That's a bargain back then. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't know it though, did they? Very pretty building. On first down, Miami will go to work from the 14 yard line, and there's a pretty good lick put on to Shannon Crowell. As he crosses the line of scrimmage to pick up three, and Brendan Lynch, a sophomore from Hinsdale, gets his second solo of the day. It is about three, second down and seven coming up for the Cane. They lead by a score of 20 to three at 10.15 to go in the first half. Craig Erickson gets some heat. Hooks it back inside, and it is not intercepted. Wood close, though. Greg Thomas diving for it. Came up with a trap, number 27. Well, Erickson was trying to go to, to Carroll, 81, to see. It's a trap. Yeah, the ball hit the ground. Good call. Nothing but good calls by the officials in this game so far, you know, so often. They're so quick to jump the officials, but every call they've made in this game has been good. On 37, Craig Erickson gets his pass away. Pass is caught by the star of the game so far. Wesley Carroll, and he takes it for a first down out to the 40. Eddie Fletcher was out there with him, but Wesley Carroll is 6'1", 185. Fletcher is only 5'9", and that was the difference. Well, Car Carroll has been in, put in a position where he can make some big plays. Here he is right here. He just got to release to the inside. And as you see at the top of your screen, there's no defender at the top top middle where he's going. Erickson gets set deep, throws it over the linebackers. And Fletcher can't keep up. Go on first down. They hand it off to Crowell. 195 uh, pounder. And he had a little trouble hanging on to the handle. And Wisconsin's claiming they've got the ball. But Conducting. Say yes, Wisconsin has it. And it's Eddie Fletcher coming out of the stack with it. Well, Wisconsin wasn't ranked very high defensively last year in any category, but they were very good at taking the ball away. Take a look at Crowell, number 20, on the left side of the screen. Ball just comes out in when he's being tackled. 
Wisconsin took the ball away 30 times last year by interceptions and fumbles, and 21 of those were by fumble recovery, so they're pretty good at them. Well, they get it back at the Miami 49. First time today, or second time today, they've been on the Miami side of the field. Crawford rolls out, throws an interception himself. He just threw it right to number 16, Roland Smith. Crawford realizes the ball was picked off because he's slow to come off the field. And now he gets the message. And well, he just those... simply, uh, simply overthrew the man. Yep. Keith. The ball may be wet. Uh, it is raining. The field is wet when they set the ball down. Roland Smith comes up with his first interception of the year. He had three last year, and he returned one for a touchdown. So very active out there at the corner spot. He also had two great big linemen right in his face. Yep. He had looped the yep. ball over the two defending linemen for Miami, and that caused his problem. Craig Erickson, that's a bad pass. He, <laughs> he, he, wants to, he wants to step in here and do something dramatically so badly because there's been so much yakking at him about yep. following all the legends. And, and, and he is the best athlete of those four guys Probably, that we're talking yeah. about. We're talking about Jim Kelly and Bernie Kozar and Vinny Testaverde and Steve Walsh last year, who all went on to play in the NFL. And this man right here is a better athlete than any of them. Alex Johnson sets up the backfield behind Erickson now. Drake steps up, gets his pass away. No. Number three, Randall Hill, had gone to the sideline stop, but he hadn't turned it upfield. And Erickson went ahead and threw the ball upfield. There's nobody there. Well, sometimes this is a two-way street. Now, the quarterback may look bad on that because there weren't many people around it, but the receivers, when they run their routes, are supposed to be at a certain depth and a certain width. And if the receiver doesn't get where the quarterback thinks he's going to go, then, of course, they come out looking bad, and it's the quarterback. Erickson now 5 of 17 and 73 yards. He's got Hill out there this time, except Hill's out of bounds. Randall Hill did not. Well, Randall just wasn't long enough. He had to be about 7 3 to get that ball in bounds, and it was just couldn't pull it in. So it goes as an incomplete forward pass, and Kalal comes in to punt. Purdue winning today. Not a final yet. Beating. Hurry! Hurry! Fourth down there for Wisconsin. Well, standing just inside the 25. Hits it at the 29. Not too long. Didn't get it to turn at all. And it takes a Wisconsin bounce. A big bounce back up field before the Canes can put it down. So it'll be Wisconsin ball first down at the road 47. And it picked up about 12 yards on that bounce. Twelve losses and two ties for an 843 winning percentage. Halftime credential report. What band? Roger Twybrell will be talking to Bo Schimbeckler, who's, who's uh, looking ahead to the Notre Dame opener next week. And scores, scores, scores. We've had five different possessions of the ball in the last minute and 36 seconds. Now Wisconsin owns the ball, just short of their own 48. First down. Williams, the lone back. And Williams, who is a 180-pound sophomore from Columbus, Georgia, moves it over to the Miami 47. Key play. Well, there have been several key plays, but they've been pretty much made by the same man. Wesley Carroll, returning punts, special team play. He's, he's dynamite. He's had about four of these that have given Miami good field position and a short way to go. And you don't, when you don't have to go very far offensively, you're going to score some points. Second down, short five. Lionel Crawford running for his life. Gets his pass away, and it is intercepted at the 31-yard line by Roland Smith. He's got two. And that one he earned. I mean, really earned. Crawford under pressure. You got to give some of this interception, the turnover to the defensive line for putting the pressure. Ball is up for grabs. Smith wants it. 
very badly, goes after it. His second interception of the day. Miami had 17 interceptions last year and 35 takeaways. That is right up there with the best in the country. Iran Washington trying to knock it loose, but he just simply couldn't. And so the game now, first down on their own 31. And Trey Garrick zips back, zips the pass. Wesley Carroll's got it up the middle to the 40 of Wisconsin. Carroll, Wesley Carroll, seems to be the only Hurricane who consistently can catch the football. He's thrown it to the other ones, uh, Dawkins and uh, Hill. They've either been out of bounds or it's been overthrown, and he seems to really have his timing worked out with Wesley Carroll. Carroll's caught four for 81 yards, plus all that punt return. Alex Johnson now, the back seal for Miami. And Johnson has it. Runs in to the back of Bobby Garcia, his center. And he's going to stop. Leon Johnson, another Georgian, who's up here in the north playing football. Defensive tackle for Wisconsin. Made that stop. Second down, call it 11. John Morton, been very successful in, uh, his, when he was at Tulsa and at North Dakota State. In fact, in 83, was the Division II national champion. Kane, second down, 11. Harrison checks off. Lob pass down the middle, caught by Dawkins. Touched it just over the defender, and Dawkins reels it in, and it's another first down for Miami. Well, the one thing that Erickson is doing well is he's seeing everything that's going on. He's not being confused or fooled. Take a look here. Over here is the receiver. He's going to go in. Here's a man right here. The rest of them are blitzing. There's nobody at the top of the screen. He sees the blitz, calmly has, I got time to get rid of this, and lays it out there where it's not too hard where he can make the catch. Finally, back in and running back. Whistle stop. That normally means somebody's moving along the offensive front. Procedure Miami. Talking to Dennis Erickson yesterday, moving from Washington State down to Miami, I asked him, uh, how does it feel to be starting at the top? <laughs> well, we just want to maintain the, the program, and uh, we have some good athletes, and, of course, Jimmy did a great job here and has built the program up, and uh, it's going to be uh, interesting to see us maintain it. We can maintain it, but it's like a lot of programs in the country, maintaining it may be harder than getting where we're at. He is sometimes, isn't he? Jimmy left him a full cover. Yes, he did. Erickson hit from behind. Deck by Leon Johnson, junior from Decatur, Georgia. He hit him with some authority, too, and dropped him back on the 30, just inside the 36. Take a look at the protection from ground level, 65 in the red shirt. Obviously a blown assignment, 73 Searcy and the other lineman blocking on 44 Kisling and uh, Johnson came free, a missed assignment up front. There's a loss on that play, way back. That's down the middle and that's incomplete. That'll bring up third down, and it's about third and 21. Well, again, they continue to blitz. They've got to, some of the linemen for the Hurricanes a little bit confused. The safety blitz was free. Erickson saw it and just threw the ball away. All right, Carroll, who was out for a breather, is back in, and uh, so is 37. Doyle Aaron. Aaron is one of the wideouts to the bottom of the picture, so you got trips to the bottom. You've got uh, Dawkins, Aaron, and Carroll all to the bottom of the picture. And they go deep for Aaron. Incomplete. Depending on the play, 21, Lamar White. White got into his, uh, his shirt and stayed there. Lamar White is uh, the outstanding defensive football player on this team. He, uh, had four interceptions last year and was voted the defensive most valuable player for the Badgers. Played very well last year against Miami. 
But Al is in the punt. First one was 57. Second one, 55. The last one was only 14. He's going to try to knock this one. Pooch kick it. Hit it high and drop it down inside the 10. There it is. They got to stop it short of the goal line, and they do. They've killed it down around the two yard line. So Jesse Armstead, who is a true freshman, is down underneath Galal's punt and keeps it from going into the end zone. Time remaining, first quarter, five minutes and 36 seconds. leading by a score of 20 to 3 Wisconsin's ball at their own two yard line you got a new quarterback Sean Wilson a red shirt freshman from Norman Oklahoma is in there now Lionel Crawford last five passes two were intercepted 0 for 5 and so they go to Wilson start. is that a safety point I guess forward progress probably he said he got outside the goal line but this is a Tough place to bring in a new quarterback, especially a redshirt freshman, never played in a college game before. I think it's, I think it's a mistake. I, I, I think you need. I don't object to bringing in another quarterback, but I think you ought to have a little bit better field position when you bring him in. Playpool was the carrier, taking a long time to get the play in. Wilson is a, supposed to be a little bit better thrower than Crawford. Here's a pretty good place to crank it up and let it go downfield, except Miami's not going to give you that much time. Well, ball dropped by Aaron Brown, a freshman from Newark, Ohio, thrown behind him a little bit. But you throw in that kind of a pattern, that's an invitation disaster. And that's a part of Don Morton's uh, problem right there. You said it, a redshirt freshman quarterback throwing to a true freshman wide receiver. Coming into the year, he had some other wide receivers. All three of them are out for this game. Mike Tams, Bill Williams, and Chris Ballard were all experienced wide receivers. They've all been injured. Some of one is out for the year, and a couple of them are out for this ball game. He's had real problems with his wide receivers. Tim Ware, another true freshman, is in there at a wide out. Wilson rolls in the end zone to buy a little time. Now gets his pass up field, but uh, in this instance, Aaron Brown, the freshman wideout, had gone down to the 20-yard line, short of it, and stopped. And he just stand there looking at him instead of running across the field to give him some kind of a target. Well, he'd run his route, and then... Uh, then he quit. Yeah, that's right. He didn't have anywhere to go. The sideline was there. He should have went back to the inside, and, and Wilson thought maybe he'd go down the field and threw it up the Come back to the quarterback so he can see you. Yep. Brecky. Second time today that Brad's been stuck on the back end, the back line of the end zone. First time it was blocked by Harden. This time he just killed it. Knocked it all the way to the Miami 45. Wesley Carroll weaving around and brings it back to the Wisconsin 35-yard line. That is a 19-yard return after a 54-yard punt. And I mean, Brecky really nailed that kick. I want my Jenny Local dealership today. And by Monroe Shock Absorbers. For shocks and struts, America rides Monroe. Wesley Carroll, that's what he's been doing today. Returned five punts, averaging 24 Sure. And he is a survivor. You got to give him a lot of credit for his uh, tough upbringing, going to junior college, getting everything straight. Dennis Erickson said he is just a hard worker, great worth ethic, and just one of the best players on the team. He also has four receptions for 81 yards and a touchdown. Leonard Connolly carried that time, and John Banizak, the senior nose guard from Calumet City, Illinois, brought him down. Pick up of a couple of yards. Five seconds here for our ABC station to identify themselves. My 
County has been dominant in this ball game. Wisconsin got a field goal, 38 yard, and get on the board first. Since then, the Miami defense and special teams have dominated this game. The offense still a little tentative, but warming up. Over the middle, Craig Erickson to Wesley Carroll again. Young Erickson, a junior, has uh, stepped into the starting role. His dad uh, played at Northwestern and this year with the whole family watching today. The backup quarterback is uh, Gino Toretto. Toretti is from Benol, uh, California. And the number three quarterback, uh, also a redshirt freshman like Toretta, is Joe Cole out of Jupiter, Florida. And then there's a youngster named Forte from uh, New Jersey. He's somewhere in the future. This is Conley. And Leonard gets inside the 25 to the 23, and that's good for a Miami first down. Well, Conley is not very big, uh, Keith. Uh, 5'9 and 170. He got great quickness and uh, speed and good receiver. Led the, uh, not led the team in re rushing last year, but was right up there behind Cleveland Gary, who was a first-round draft choice uh, by the uh, Los Angeles Rams. He finally signed it. Little rollout action. Craig Erickson shoots it down the middle. The pass good to Lamar Thomas, and Thomas is dropped just short of the 10-yard line. That may have been Craig Erickson's most impressive move. He rolled out, bought a time, found his tunnel, and then drilled his man. Here's his man right here, just going to slide to the inside. And you're right, he's going to show some athletic ability, make the fake to his right, and then come out on the rollout. And Thomas finds the area and stays in it and makes the completion. Erickson now 9 of 24 for 137 yards. Handed to Conley. Conley goes down at the 10. A defensive surge led by Malvin Hunter, a junior from Harvey, Illinois. There's Gino Toretta. Gino's brother played here at Miami. Jeff Toretta back, backed up Vinny Testaverde. In fact, uh, Gino that you're looking at right there was highly recruited a couple of year, years ago by Dennis Erickson at Washington State. And uh, Gino said, leave me alone. I'm going to Miami. Little did he know that a couple of years down the road he was playing for Dennis. Erickson's pass. Good. Touchdown. Wesley Carroll, second of the day. Craig Erickson's pass was complete to Wesley Carroll. The third day the line. Take a look at it. Just going to go up the field. There's the safety, Robinson, 25 blitzing. Just a little break to the outside. Nothing uh, Mahone, the number six, the defensive back there, but Carroll having a great day. You got a penalty flag and a face mask call. It's against the Wisconsin defense. So the touchdown will stand. They'll penalize Wisconsin on the kickoff. Wesley Carroll's numbers are becoming imposing. Wow. Let's take a look at the uh, touchdown right there. Mahone, number six, grabs the face mask. Huerta for the extra point. Carroll, six catches, 96 yards, and two touchdowns. At 151 to go, first half. Hey, Carroll! Big speaker is, uh, you know, you just like to see somebody like that make it. Uh, he has a television show, and last year, the year before, when they were in the midst of a seven or eight game losing streak, he came on with a television show. There was a casket, and there was the, the mortuary music, and they had a close up, and the casket opened up, and there was Morton. He got up and he says, Contrary to popular belief, we are not <laughs> dead yet. <laughs> with a good sense of humor. Then they went one and ten last year. Yeah. Attendance has dropped steadily for the last five years here, too, has it? Yes, it has. Williams and Claypool are deep. That's Williams. Tried to pop outside, but number 31 for Miami wouldn't buy it. Darrell Williams and bumps him out of bounds, short of the 20-yard line. Mark him at the 18, and that's where the Badgers will have to go to work. 
And let's see who they send out at quarterback this time. It'll be uh, Wilson again, Sean Wilson. Lionel Crawford started, just could not unwind it. Wilson's uh, first entry into the game was out of the end zone. Now he uh, must feel like he's got a pasture behind him. Almost knocked down by his own man. And then he is knocked down by Greg Mark. And Jesse Armstead. Armstead is a true freshman out of Dallas, Texas. He was one of the outstanding linebackers that was recruited this year. And uh, Jimmy Johnson last year got a couple of uh, outstanding linebackers. And then when, when Johnson left, there was some talk about uh, some of the highly recruited players leaving Miami. And Erickson didn't have to do any recruiting to get players. He had to go out and get make sure they stayed there. And he did a nice job, and he says he got them all. This Armstead on a blitz, and he just nailed Wilson to the carpet. Jesse is only 200 pounds, right around 200 pounds. I can't believe that he'll stay at linebacker, though. He looks like he might wind up going well, to a strong Well, when Johnson recruits, he says, I recruit for intelligence and speed. And right here is Armstead. Watch him uh, as he just comes from this side. He is down in a three-point position. He says uh, his priority was speed, and uh, when you look at this University of Miami team, there is speed everywhere. Mike Adam Lina. Well, Keith, despite the recent tough times, Wisconsin does have a proud football tradition. Who could forget Ron Vanderkellen to Pat Richter back in that 1963 Rose Bowl? Pat, you live here in Madison. You know a lot about this Wisconsin football program. Can it return to the days of glory? Well, we certainly hope so, Mike. And I think today uh, we've passed the ball a little bit more than we did last year. And I think uh, with a couple of breaks, it's it's going a little bit better than it had been. And I think uh, it seems to be getting uh, where we want it. If we have a pass receiver, I'd like to see that. We could use you to suit up, or Wisconsin could today. Is the school on the right track? I think so. I think that uh, you know, have to adapt. And, of course, you're playing the toughest team in the country, I think, in terms of intimidation and defense. And I think it's done a reasonably good job. The wind is very tough here today. And... Uh, but I think they've done a better job than I think they might have expected. Your son is a freshman here on a hockey scholarship. How come he's not playing football? Well, he's about as uh, slow as I am. He's got good hands, but he's, he's not got my speed, I'm afraid. Pat, thanks for joining us. Good to see you. Thank you. Pat Richter, one of the great ones. In 1962 Rose Bowl game, Southern California finally hung on to win against Wisconsin, one of the longest bowl games in the history of mankind. This is Williams up across the 15-yard line. And Kenny Barry finally brought him down. That stops the clock at 47 seconds. Remember that? Pete Bethard, Hal Betzold, and Ron Vandekill and Pat Richter. It was a game of catch for 42-37 or something like that. I remember all those names. I was just a mere <laughs> child at that time. <laughs> 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 yes, you were. You were, weren't you? I was. Was it Keith Black? Pressure's on. Brecky gets it out fourth down and this time Carol looking downfield she's one two three four five six red shirts and says hmm safety first fair catch and so the fair catch will give Miami the ball at their own 48 and these are four of the rules changes into effect this year and I, it's, these are the major ones and the most dramatic one of course is no kick in tee I see that uh, uh, Pete Rozelle has modified that noise rule in the NFL a little bit here. In college ball, you get charged uh, with one timeout, and then after that, they walk off successive five-yard penalties, which may be a little more fair than losing all your times out. That yeah, pass like, is underthrown. I like the college rule more than the pro rule because uh, in college, you lose, you lose one timeout, and then they start penalizing you five yards uh, as many times as they need to. In pros, you could lose all three of your timeouts and then lose to five yards, and I think for the fans in the stands, and that's who you're trying to affect by this, I think the five yards, if you march it off, they're going to see something visually, and it may say, hey, listen, we're, we're, we're affecting our ball club, whereas you take the timeouts away, they may not know that. Second down and 10 for the Canes from their 48. Ray Garrison gives the ball away to Conley, and Conley bounces to the Wisconsin 48. And uh, the clock shows 28 seconds to go in the first half. Miami takes a timeout. And the Canes will be looking at third down at about six.
8 o'clock Eastern Time, 7 Central, ABC's Monday Night Football, 20th anniversary special. And then following the anniversary special, you'll have the New York Giants and the Washington Redskins pumping helmets to kick off Monday night season. Games at 9, preceding, is the anniversary special reflecting over the first 20 years. Of Monday night, and it's been called a lot of things, but whatever it's called, it all adds up to success. Giants, I see where the Giants lost their uh, running back, Joe Morris. Heard yeah, that's a real cool. Yeah. Real yeah. Third down and six. Craig Erickson lets it fly for Dawkins. Got it out of bounds inside the five. He beat White. This is the one thing the Hurricanes have not done yet today. Thrown deep down the sideline on the corners. This is an outstanding throw high and to the outside. Dawkins didn't beat White by very much, but just enough to make the reception. And the ball is placed just short of the three. First and goal for the Kane. Miami with one timeout remaining. 21 seconds on the clock in the first half. Craig Erickson whips it into the end zone, trying to get it for Dawkins. Felt he deserved it after making the catch on the sidelines, and it went through his hands. Second down and goal coming up, 18 seconds. Nickelback goes in, Tyrone Mahone for Wisconsin. He's a junior from Columbus, Georgia, and now the Badgers have called a timeout. Timeout, Wisconsin. I wonder where would they call it then? Well, they must have been mixed up on their defense uh, on the field. It's usually a reason the personnel uh, change or something is usually the reason you call a timeout defensively in that area. Of, uh, the offensive coordinator last year for the Hurricanes, Gary Stevens, who coached all of those quarterbacks that had been at the University of Miami before, Kelly, Kozar, Testaverde, and Walsh, and is currently the uh, wide receiver coach with the Miami Dolphins. Also coached uh, Erickson last year when he was a backup to Steve Walsh, and he has made a, his comment is that, that uh, Craig Erickson will be a better quarterback than any of those other four. Strong words from a man that should know he was there and coached the other four. Erickson, once he got unwound here and started uh, sorting things out, there's the pass. Touchdown, Randall Hill. He's averaging about 18 yards today on his completion, buoyed by that last long one. But that was a short one for three yards to Hill for touchdown. And the Canes are going to go to the clubhouse with a big lead. Spread them out with this three wide receivers. You got to make them. You got to cover from one sideline to the other. And there's a lot of creases to throw those slants to your wide receivers. Huerta is in for the extra point, and it's good. Point is good. So the clock shows 14 seconds in the first half. And Miami has run it off now to a 34-3 lead. Good protection, no problems there. And he just throws a little slant, and he catches it in the end zone. Take a look at it from above. Here's Hill at the top. He's just going to run a slant. These other receivers are going to more like flare control to open up a lane right in here where he can fire the ball to Hill. You see him spread out all across. The outside guy goes in, the inside goes out, and there's a lane right in there. Good read and just good coaching. Good system. Mandel Hill was a defensive back in high school. Great speed. Doesn't seem like you can get into this, uh, this football team unless you have some speed. No, then that's true. I would say that if Dennis Erickson had any 
members of the group that weren't convinced at this particular point about this offense. I think his well, he can rest his case now. <laughs> when, when Dennis came to the University of Miami in the spring, the thing that he said he was most impressed with was, first of all, the work ethic and the winning attitude of the ball club. The second thing was the defense. He was always talking about the defense. From just inside the 20, Todd Strop picks it up for Wisconsin on the bouncing kick by Huerta. And brings it back across the 30 to about the 32 yard line. You've got nine seconds remaining on the clock. And the quarterback will be Sean Wilson. Todd Strop returns Huerta's kick to the Wisconsin. The third quarterback would be Brad Brecky, who is the punter. If they need to go to him. Right now, with nine seconds, probably one play. Yep, give it to Williams. Williams runs it across the 40, out here at the 42, and that will run off the clock. So the first half of play, and I must say, in all honesty, it is not surprising. Miami 34, Wisconsin 3. We now join Roger Feibel in New York. Coming up on the Prudential Halftime Report, Penn State continues to struggle. Last year, their first losing season in over 50 years. They had a tough time with Virginia at home today. We'll have scores and, of course, the big plays. But first, this commercial and a word from our ABC stations. Meeting your needs in investments, insurance, and real estate. Come to the Prudential and build your future on the rock. Here now, Roger Twibell. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Halftime. The top two ranked teams in the nation, Notre Dame and Michigan, are both idle today, but they'll be playing next Saturday against one another in Ann Arbor. And that game will be here right on ABC at 3.30 Eastern Time next Saturday. Meanwhile, fourth-ranked Nebraska playing Northern Illinois. Ken Clark, 170 yards rushing in the first half late in this game. Now Nebraska leads it 48-17. to Tonight, Auburn will play host to Pacific season opener for Auburn. Also tonight, Tennessee and UCLA and young Brett Johnson gets a start for the Bruins at the Rose Bowl. Arkansas is idle this rank, uh, ranked seventh in the nation. They'll play Tulsa next week, a team that always gives them a lot of trouble. Oklahoma taking on Baylor. The eighth-ranked Sooners lead at 33-7 in the fourth quarter. Quarterback Steve Collins of Oklahoma broke his finger early in this game. Another Big 8 team in action today, Colorado and Colorado State. This is always a tough matchup. It doesn't make any difference what the records are. Darian Hagan on the auction, pitches it back to Eric by enemy. And watch this move down at the goal line. 44 yards for the touchdown. And right now in the third quarter, Colorado leads Colorado State 24-17. Tonight, Clemson and Florida State will hook up. Terry Allen, the running back for Clemson, has been reinstated after missing the first game. Illinois is idle this week. They're ranked 11th after their victory over Southern Cal. They'll play next week at Colorado. That'll be a tough one. We talked about Penn State at the top. Joe Paterno. They lost five of their last six a year ago. Their home opener against Virginia. This is Sean Moore in the first quarter passing to Herman Moore, 24 yards for the touchdown. That's the way it went for Penn State as they lose it. The final score there, Virginia upsets Penn State 14-6. Also in the East, Syracuse and Temple. And Syracuse, a big winner, 43-3. The final, Jerry Burke has lost his first two games as Temple coach. Washington and Texas A&M in the third quarter. Washington, a 13-3 lead. Kerry Conklin, a 22-yard touchdown pass to Mario Bailey. West Virginia has defeated Maryland. They came from behind to do it. The final, the Mountaineers, 14, and the Terrapins, 10. Mississippi and Florida, the home opener for the Gators. That's Billy Brewer, the old Miss coach. And turnovers, the story here today. Five Florida turnovers led to four Ole Miss scores, including this pick by Chauncey Godwin, 58 yards on the interception return, and Florida loses their home opener for the first time since 1971. Also, Indiana and Kentucky, and in the final here, Kentucky defeats Indiana 17-14. Jerry Claiborne gets his team their first victory of the year, that their season opener. Pitt and Boston College, 29-10. Pitt has defeated B.C. 
Ball State and Rutgers. And for the second consecutive week, Rutgers has played to a tie that game in Piscataway, New Jersey. And Purdue, a final now over Miami of Ohio. The score there, Purdue 27 and Miami of Ohio 10. We'll be back with more on the Prudential Halftime Report. But first, let's take a look at next week's top 10 matchups. crowd remaining in the rain the wind now is kicked up a bit I think blowing from our left to our right as we watch the ball game the Badgers coming to the near side of the field and the Hurricanes to the far side with Miami exploding the first 10 minutes of the game reasonably interesting but then once uh, young Erickson got untracked in the new offense of new coach Erickson uh, boy I tell you and Wesley Carroll started uh, special teams uh, uh, really uh, kept everything going for them and uh, then uh, they got it untracked and ran off to a big lead. The uh, first Miami touchdown came when Leonard Conley jammed it in from a yard. This followed uh, two field goals by Carlos Huerta and made the score 13 to 3. But they had to pop in there three times before they could get it. And then up stepped Wesley Carroll to score the first of his two touchdowns. This was after he had uh, gotten everybody's attention with his punt returns. And right here, Bob, uh, he made a believer out of me. Just releases inside the blitzing linebacker and gets away from Mahomes and into the end zone. Those aren't great routes that he's running, but he's catching the ball and he's being where he's supposed to be, a little slant to the top of the screen. And Hill, Randall Hill, number three, and a perfect throw by Erickson. And so at halftime, it is a 34 to 3 ball game. Thompson kicked the 38 yard field goal for Wisconsin. The Badgers scored first, but that's all they have been able to do. Lionel Crawford uh, started the ball game at quarterback for Wisconsin, was replaced by Sean Wilson in the second quarter of play. Rich Thompson now is going to kick it off. Miami has Alex Johnson and Randall Hill deep for Rich Thompson's kickoff. kick by Thompson to Goodwin far and deep into the end zone and beyond the end zone back to the 20 here's Mike Adam well, Keith earlier when we were talking to Pat Richter we talked about that great Wisconsin football tradition here's another one Elroy Crazy Legs Hirsch of course a pro football Hall of Famer as well retired athletic director here at the University of Wisconsin talk to Pat about the future of this football program and where where it's heading well I think uh, this is a very young team we have right here and uh, it's sound defensively. We got some offensive holes to fill, and I think they'll keep plugging. Uh, we've got a good athletic director, Ace Sponberg, very knowledgeable about football and all the other sports as well. We have a chancellor, a new chancellor, that is very supportive of, of intercollegiate athletics, and so I think uh, you'll start to see it turn around. Watch this play by uh, with Craig Erickson, a quarterback for Miami, a second. That's Johnson carrying. Alex Johnson fumbles the ball, goes out of bounds, picks up a first down up around the 34-yard line. This is one of the new rules. We saw uh, the, uh, some of the new rules early. He fumbled that ball forward and out of bounds. Now it will come back to where the ball uh, was fumbled originally. All right. Legs, go ahead. You and Mike. You also have to do a, a selling program. you got to bring the, the fans back to Camp Randall Stadium, too, I imagine. Well, I'm, uh, I'm retired now, and I'm, I'm working part-time as a, what they call a consultant, but that means you're a fundraiser. We've built a couple of new buildings on the campus, a new golf course, so I'm out helping raise those funds to pay for it. Mike, Good to ask, see him, you Mike ask him if he's still got that little short putter. Yeah, he's, Keith Jackson wants to know if you still have that little short putter that you're so adept with. No, I, I, my back gave out, Keith, and I now have a long one. <laughs> Don't blame him. Another real long <laughs> Good one. Good to see you. Thank you. <laughs> he used to be completely over. A little old putter about two feet. <laughs> he can knock it in from everywhere. Miami's ball, second down. And six, the ball resting up near the 38-yard line. Well pop here by Craig Erickson. Drilled it into the chest of Lamar Thomas. Thomas goes across midfield to the Wisconsin 47. Lamar Thomas... Uh, Redshirt freshman out of Gainesville. Not too many receivers come to the University of Florida from Gainesville, where the University of uh, Florida is. 
was an outstanding basketball player in high school. In fact, was the runner-up to Mr. Basketball down there. He was in a basketball league this uh, summer with other collegiate basketball players. All short of the 46, inside the 47. First down for the Canes, Craig Erickson. Had a big second quarter. Starting pretty well here in the third quarter. He's got Duckins. Dawkins has got the ball and a first down at the Wisconsin 22 yard line. They've had to turn on the lights here at uh, Camp Randall Stadium. Dark day. So Miami making it look pretty easy here at the start of the third quarter. They are and uh, Craig Erickson has warmed up ever since the first quarter. He has really gotten hot in the second quarter and continues to be so here in the third. Shannon Crowell is the setback for Miami. Has the ball, number 20. And powers his way for close to a six-yard pickup on that carry. The halftime numbers in the ball game. University of Miami passing yardage, 194. Wisconsin, not much, only four first downs, but again, the real story, that doesn't show return yardage. Wesley Carroll returning four or five punts to put the University of Miami in very good punt, punt uh, in situation off of those punts. He had five for 120 yards in the first half. We had a penalty flag on each side of the ball. Personal fouls whistled against both Lamar White and Randall Hill getting into a bit of a ruckus. And uh, the penalty is offset. Right, 21 and uh, number three right there, a little shoving and pushing. All right, boys, calm down. <laughs> Second down, into the middle. They run it, and it's close to a first down as Alex Johnson, 170-pound junior, takes it in uh, near the 11. A look at the individual leaders the first half Erickson after a slow first half when he was only one of nine halftime was 12 of 29 make that Crowell on that last carry Crowell Carroll led the receivers with six for 92 and two touchdowns Crowell is the bigger of uh, all the backs there's a redshirt freshman from Brooklyn on the squad, a 215-pounder named McGuire. Craig Erickson's pass, almost intercepted by Brad Mayo, and he had nothing in front of him except a lot of humidity and a light rain. <laughs> That's well put. <laughs> and he may have been looking at all that humidity and light rain when he was trying. This is a great shot right here. Mayo looks into the quarterback, sees the move, reads it all the way, this is very similar, Keith, the last Monday night, we had a similar shot when the, the uh, Illinois receiver went down, ran a quick out and up yep. for the touchdown. Second and ten. Go, 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 go. Rowell, number 79, pulled out and got in front of him. And Big Mike Sullivan, junior out of Chicago at 270 pounds, leads the way for the running back just inside the eight-yard line. Oklahoma beats Baylor. Colorado comes back against Colorado State now to lead in the third quarter. I'm not sure that uh, one would want to call that an upset, yeah. Virginia beating Penn State. I'm not so sure about that. I don't think Virginia was as bad as they looked against Notre Dame, and I think Lou Holtz would be the first to tell you that. Well, Preseason ratings don't mean anything anyway. Pass is drilled and off the hands of Dawkins and incomplete as Mahone defends on the play for Wisconsin. So the Wisconsin Badger defensive unit stands up once they got inside the 20 and got pretty horsey about things and stopped them and they'll go for three now. That score right there may have some long range meaning. Future of Galen Hall. Huerta. <laughs> for a 24-yard try, and it is good. He has hit kicks of 28, 43, and now 24. And the lead for Miami goes to 34 points. Peerless. Kicks off. Miami having its 
away now. Ten yard line, Robert Williams. Penalty flag. As Williams gets back to about the 24 yard line. Clipping Wisconsin. Starts going bad, it just gets off. Well, that's the thing that you have to guard against uh, on both sides of the uh, field is the sloppy play. Uh, Wisconsin, you still want to do some things right uh, offensively to build for next week's game and for the season. This is only their first game. Got a clip on the run back. First down. Sean Wilson. This is an opportunity for Wilson to show Morton and the offensive staff what he can do. We got a smoke bomb or something going off down behind the end zone, but they're going to let the teams go ahead and play. Wilson rolls it out, throws it, and the pass is caught just over the 20 and about a yard or so short of the first down. And the completion goes to Tyran Washington. Washington has been looking at the ball on two or three occasions. And the man is. Uh, Having some fun down there. It was a big pall of smoke. I thought it was a smoke bomb, but it's... Uh, I think it's the Ibis under there. It's really? Ibis under the, the crowd. The mascot yeah. of the University of Miami. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He survived it. Go for the first down. Nothing doing. 96. Cortez Kennedy. All 300 pounds of him just buries the 180-pound Tywin Claypool. Kennedy came into the University of Miami with about 325, 30 pounds. And Saw that he had an opportunity to play and really shed the weight and got down. And now is one of their uh, one of their top four uh, defensive linemen. In fact, beat Jimmy Jones out, who was a starter last year. He can't get his job back. It's third and close to three. Wilson pops out of there and gets the first down. Greg Mark had a hold of him, but in. Uh, Milling around inside, uh, he got away from Mark and picked up the first down. Running the ball out close to the 27-yard line. Freshman catches, goes to the 35. That's going to be a little short of the first down there as well. This is Don Morton's third year at Wisconsin. The first two years have really been with the beer offense. And this is the first year that he's really making a sincere effort to open the game up a little bit, go to a one back three wide receivers or one back, two tight ends and two wide and really throw the ball. But you have to have the personnel to be able to do that. He's been very successful everywhere he has been with that beer offense, but realizes he has to be able to throw the ball also. Second and one. Wilson's pass is a little behind the intended receiver tight end Kerry Miller, who was in the grasp of Maurice Crump. The ball arrived. Maurice, number 49. Haven't called his name much today because uh, they haven't been coming toward him. That's for sure. Probably, uh, well, unquestionably, the best linebacker on this team. And, uh, great instincts. The best uh, tackler on the club. Used to play a little, uh, little baseball, little league baseball. Yep. That's what we call. It's first World base. Oh. World Series. Third down and one. Tywin Claypool with a personal greeting from Bernard Clark, short of the line of scrimmage. Loss is back to the 34. Here's Clark right here, watch him as he steps right into the hole and says hello to Mr. Claypool. This is the way you like it as a linebacker. Nobody blocking you and on a smaller back. Clark reminds me of Percy Snow. Punt is out of there by Brad Brecky. Good kick this time by Brad. And Carroll bobbles the ball, picks it up on the 16, and his shirt tailed at the 18. Well, 
How about that? Dewar Sharp, number 36. A reserve linebacker got downfield and put Mr. Carroll down inside the 20. Percentage of 385. There's a story on some of the young men who have played the quarterback position for Miami and before all of these guys there was a fellow named Myra that wouldn't do that either. That's for sure all first round draft choices all millionaires all coached by the same man Gary Stevens and as I said before Gary thinks that Erickson will be better than any of them. Number 21 Alex Jump. The ball from a 19 yard line is where the official is started will root his way out just over the 20. Ewell, number 46, is a junior from Cleveland, Ohio. An outstanding student in his own right, uh, academic all Big Ten. Now they put him right on the 20. Going to throw this one. Sideline. Randall Hill was given it the full act, but it's it was trying. short. And he definitely trapped it. Now, Mom and Dad, I want you to watch this very carefully. Look at this. Now, which would you prefer to have to buy for your son? The small one, or the black one there, is a number nine. The other one is a 17 triple E. And it is worn down the middle. The pass to Carroll is good. Craig Erickson hit him right on the numbers that night. That 17 Triple E is worn by Leon Searcy, 6'3, 280 pound offensive tackle, a sophomore from Orlando. Number 73. And if you're a quarterback starting your first game, you want all your offensive linemen to wear size 17 Triple E. <laughs> <laughs> he wears a 19 Triple E uh, dress shoe. I mean, you put a rudder and a motor on that sucker and you can go fishing. <laughs> hmm. Craig Erickson. Again, the pass is caught, reeled in, literally, by Dale Dawkins, who's a little bigger than you might think, because he goes flickering, flickering around out there. But Dale is 6'1", 190. He's got good size. All right, answer the question. Why is uh, Craig Erickson still in the game? Well, they have a big lead. There's no doubt about that. But Craig Erickson is starting his first game. This is the first game of the year. He needs to take some snaps. Bob Bratkowski, the offensive coordinator for the Hurricanes, was saying in practice this offense was getting beat up. In fact, they were really losing confidence in themselves because their defense was so good going against them every day. Alex Johnson blazing down the sidelines has hit the chalk at the 27 yard line he thought he had a chance to go home for the touchdown but they'll bring him back and put him down at the 27. When you're going against this defense which is such a good defense uh, was dominating the offense in practice Johnson and the other halfbacks and Erickson and the other quarterbacks were just getting uh, beat smothered uh, and uh, Ratkowski said uh, you know be good to play somebody else now they're getting their confidence back against the lesser defense in Wisconsin. Carrying the ball here is Shannon Crowell, and uh, Crowell will pick up what appears to be a first down just inside the 17 of Wisconsin. Looks to me like now the Badgers are getting a little tired defensively. They've been out there most of the day. Yes, they have. Well, you're still playing a Big Ten defense. I don't care anything else it's still a Big Ten defense and uh, that's a, a sales every point every for coach, coach every coach in the Big Ten will tell you you have to have defense first in the Big Ten if you're going to play in the Big Ten first down from the 17 of Wisconsin Johnson is back in there now he moves out of the setback which means pass Erickson box it lets it go and out of the door oh, no, touchdown just barely for Doyle Aaron Oh, I mean, he was tippy toeing down that chalk, trying desperately to stay in bounds, and he did. Well, 
heavy strength offensively are their wide receivers. They have six different men that have speed and can run. Watch Erickson, great protection, pumps, has the time, and he throws it over the defensive man. The official is right there. He told the line and got him in. Extra point try is good. At 7-16, the play of the game, 44-3, Miami. of the campus here at the University of Wisconsin in Madison named for the university's fifth president John Bascom well the party's on on the Miami sideline Erickson now 17 of 37 for 280 yards and four touchdowns and that last one was just a flick of the wrist get it into the grasp of Aaron for the touchdown and from where I'm sitting I know there was some, there was an official sitting right on the line I mean just standing astride it but uh, that looked like one of those things that could have gone either way yeah he was in yeah, well, right well, might as well yeah. of course he is he, it's in the book sure well you got to give him you got to give him a little leeway too I mean if he's standing right there he saw it it's, although it is a kind of tough this is one of the things it's, it's tough to see possession with one eye and feet in bounds with the other. I know they, they try to work together back on those uh, back lines of the end zone, but that is one of the toughest calls uh, in all of football. It's not like baseball to play at first base. At least you can hear the ball hitting the glove. Yeah. In this instance, you can't. <laughs> After the five yard penalty, Werta hits it again. Short this time, taken at the 17-yard line by Robert Williams. And Williams gets out for about a 17-yard return to the 34. Amongst those coming in and involved in that play, as a matter of fact, is Maurice Crump, who at the age of 11 was a member of the Tampa area team that faced Taiwan in the Little League World Series Championship game 1981. Maurice catching, strikes out there. Tampa lost the game 4-3. Another member of that Tampa team, incidentally, is Gary Sheffield, who has been part of the Milwaukee Brewers organization, in fact, started at shortstop for them earlier this season. Sean Wilson, Norman, Oklahoma, takes off, takes a lick, but gets it across midfield. And the crowd applauds him. Number six, Kenny Berry, came over and put a helmet right on his numbers, but young Sean took it has a big gain. Mike Adamley now. Well, Keith, you, you wondered how long uh, Dennis Erickson was going to go with Craig Erickson. His day is done. Apparently, the coach feels he's sharp enough uh, after putting 44 points on the board, and we're going to get a chance to look at Gino Toretta, the heralded freshman from California. Next from Pinola. Here goes Wilson, handing the ball off, and number 44 has found his way defensively. Shane Curry into the backfield, and there's a loss on the play. Jimmy Henderson. Jimmy Henderson just had no chance to get away from him. Gino Toretta. Pinole, incidentally, if you wonder where it is, and it is Pinole, not Pinole. And it is located uh, just over the hill from Berkeley, north of San Francisco and northwest of Oakland. I know that because my grandson. Right. Has it? Tony Spate. That'll be three catches for Tony today. And he's going to have uh, not quite the first down. Picked up about eight on the play. Let's pause five seconds right here for our ABC stations to identify themselves. Third down and two. Miami in control of the ball game, 44 to three. Six minutes to go, third quarter. Ball is loose. That play and the ball covered by Miller, but Miller is just happened to be in the right place at the right time. Robert Williams was clobbered by Shane Curry, and it was Curry who made the play. 
Curry, the defensive end, the backup to Willis Begeese. He doesn't even start on the right side of your screen. Comes across. He's the man that's supposed to be optioned. He gets the ball with his left hand, and Wilson puts him down. The Hurricanes recover going the other way. And so Gino Toretta is in the ball game now, replacing Craig Erickson. Hands it off. Goes to Alex Johnson, who's playing a lot. And Johnson's going to pick up seven or eight yards on that carry. Well, Colorado now with an 18-point lead over Colorado State. Washington, 19-3 over A&M. I don't think A&M's win over LSU was all that big a surprise either, frankly. I think uh, Washington Huskies are going to be a pretty good football team. We'll find out. they got to play Colorado. Before they get into the back ten season. Second down. Drops it again. Penalty flag. Holding Miami. UCLA, which is another pretty good team out in that western part of the country, opening their season uh, tonight against the Tennessee Volunteers. Holding on the offense, still second down. Most everybody uh, getting uh, underway is Craig Erickson there. That's what he looks like without the hard hat. Having finished his day with 280 yards, he was not particularly effective in the first quarter. Once he got the kinks out, he went 11 for 20 and 187 yards, three touchdowns in the second quarter. Shannon Crowell now on the field. Second down for McCain. Toretta almost dropped the ball, gets it back, throws to Crowell. Crowell is run down from behind. And a first down near the Wisconsin 26-yard line. Rafael Robinson. Ran him down, otherwise Crowell's got six. It's a nice job by Toretta. They're blitzing again. He almost uh, gets hit. He does get hit, but just gets it off in time. Wisconsin continues to blitz. They have more people coming than Miami can protect. The quarterback has to recognize it and get rid of it, and he has. And another big play for the Hurricanes. This is number 25, Kevin Gibbs, freshman fullback. Gary. There's uh, Erickson on the sideline. A cute story. Father Leo Armburst, who is the uh, unofficial team chaplain, uh, told uh, Craig his only problem that he's following uh, four quarter and following in the quarterback tradition at Miami is he's not a Catholic. But the four were Catholics. And Craig said, "Well, I went to a Catholic high school. And I can say a hail, say a hail Mary. He's hoping that he doesn't have to throw many hail Marys." again and gets down around the 20. There is another group of Catholic folks coming to Miami toward the end of the season that may have something to say about that. This group right here. Yes, sir. The Notre Dame bunch. But next week, they'll be in Ann Arbor, Michigan, playing their second game of the season, having opened up with a win over Virginia. And it'll be Michigan's opening game of the season. Second for the Irish. And... Uh, We'll have it for you at 3.30 Eastern time. It is a game where the outcome will echo the entire season. No question about that. A great job that Holtz has done at Notre Dame since he's been there the short time he's been there. Third down and four, and Alex Johnson is back in the backfield for Miami. Loretta gives it to him. He drops it, and the ball's rolling around, and it's picked up. And advance it, picked up at the 20-yard line by Tyrone Mahone of Wisconsin. The offense can advance it. Defense can. And so the Badger defensive group earns away Miami. You would think with a score 44-3 in the third quarter that the Wisconsin defense hasn't played very well. Uh, actually, it hasn't played that badly. They haven't played that poorly. That's right. That's for sure. And you see good penetration. So the ball is put down on the 20. Joy, a lot of Georgia folks on this uh, Wisconsin team. Four five. Go Badgers! 
John Wilson stays at quarterback. I have no information that Crawford was injured. Just in effect, this is Claypool carrying, and he picks up a couple of yards. Darren Smith brought him down. As we take a look there at Horton, you know, he's had a tougher problem than most coaches in the Big Ten in the past. They just recently instituted a rule, Keith. I know you're aware of it. But you can't bring in, or you can bring in uh, junior college uh, players, but if they do come in, they have to sit out of here. Mike White in the early 80s at Illinois really rebuilt that Illinois program by bringing in a lot of JC players, and they played immediately. But now, when you come to the Big Ten, if you're a JC, you have to sit out. Not sure that was a. Here's Curry facing Wilson. He throws it away. And is it good? Yes. Caught at the 30 by Craig Hudson. He was able to extend that one leg just far enough and make a catch on it. I don't know if it's a good rule or not. I know some of the thinking well, was that let's not uh, get into the let not have vagabonds coming in. Yeah. Uh, well, I think at, the, at the time, too, a lot of those guys at Illinois weren't going on and getting their uh, degree. Degrees, yep. They were coming in and playing and leaving. And I think instead of Illinois really doing something about it, the Big Ten stepped in and said, hey, league-wide now, we're not going to be able to do this. But I think it's hurting the Big Ten competitively with all the other conferences and independents around the country who do take these uh, players in. Robert Williams has the ball. He runs away from a couple of games, but cannot get away from Curry. And Barry, they get him. It certainly hurts the have-nots. No question about that. The haves now, they're in pretty good shape. Well, you know, but uh, you look at even look at Ohio State. You know full well that John Cooper wouldn't mind. Uh, no, and I think the coach. I think the coaches now see the see what. I mean, you're in an entertainment business. I mean, you're first there to get an education, and these you want them to get education. But you're also in the entertainment business. Look at the stadium here today. Uh, the uh, the average attendance has been going down the last four years. Wilson, a little quick pop, and it is incomplete intended for Craig Hudson. But it is a mistake, a very large mistake. You put all the blame for what happens uh, at a place like here on the one man, the coach. Oh, there's no question about that. Absolutely But wrong. I think it makes it more difficult for him when you say you can't bring in uh, junior players. Uh, for instance, a great example is Miami bringing in Wesley Carroll. He yep. came into school in the spring, went to the spring semester at the University of Miami. What a great impact he's had on a team that was loaded at wide receiver to begin with. Right. Wilson, backside pressure, gets it away. Under that pressure, is short. Darren Smith, number 45, was looping from the outside, and just as Sean Wilson let it go, Smith ran right up his back. I think the big, just to finish this off, Keith, I just think the Big Ten coaches and athletic directors have to take a want, want the, uh, the presidents and the chancellors of the universities to take another look at this and say, hey, let's, let's take in some of these junior college guys, let them be eligible, but let's make, make sure they get their education at the same time. Make sure they're qualified when they come right. right. Pee Wee Smith is back under this punt for Miami. Pee Wee makes the catch, and here he goes. <laughs> He's another hauler. One forty-nine to go in the third quarter. We'll be right back. Next Saturday. You talk about junior college players, uh, Pee Wee Smith. Turned that point. He's another JC guy from Santa Monica. And you, when you see Miami having different men back there continuing to return punts well, it speaks well of the return team also. They must be doing something right. Toretta down the middle has the pass picked off, stolen by Eddie Fletcher. And Eddie comes back to the 48 yard line. Good play by Eddie Fletcher. Fletcher is not big, only 5'9. But he got up to make that interception the strengths defensively of the Wisconsin team as their cornerbacks. But you're just a sophomore. Miami is a 15-yard penalty. Dead bomb. 
personal foul on Miami. First down, Wisconsin. That's the fourth one in this game. Here's a look at it from the end zone. Toretta looks to his right the entire way, and Fletcher just makes a nice move. His man beat him. He cut underneath and made the interception. After the penalty, the ball has moved inside the 36 of Miami, where it's first down for the Badgers. Leon Hunt set up in the backfield. Wilson looking around, and Wilson doesn't have that much time to look around because big people like Jimmy Jones are hunting him, and this time Jimmy got him. Jimmy Jones, tackle Sean Wilson. Call. Jimmy Jones was a starter last year. He is married with one child. And he sat out the spring semester at the University of Miami with the university's blessing so he could work. He's going to be a high draft choice in the, in the NFL draft next year. There were some agents wanted to give him some money illegally, $10,000, as much as $10,000. He says, no, thank you. I'm going to work, support my family, and go back to school in the fall. But he lost his starting job because of it. Wilson throws a bullet. Pass is incomplete. It's off the chest of Tony Spaeth. And perhaps a good thing because he couldn't hold it after being hit. Mike Adamley checks in. Well, Keith, as you accurately surmised earlier, Lionel Crawford was not hurt. He was pulled just based on the basis of his play. They wanted to get a look at Sean Wilson, but talking to some people on the Wisconsin sideline, I think Don Morton is trying to send Lionel Crawford a message this season. You're our leader. A lot of our offensive hopes ride on your shoulders. Sit this one out for the rest of the game and think about next week. They play Toledo next week. Eric Long, Wilson, third down and 16, can't do anything with it, 95. Eric Miller, a sophomore from Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, brings him down, and so we're going to be looking at another punt. 95 is Miller, he just has containment, comes up field, avoids the block of Hunt, number 32. Miller is a backup. He's about the seventh or eighth defensive lineman, and he could play probably for a lot of teams in this country. Brad Brecky is in for his 10th punt, averaging just under 44 yards per kick. And that's Pee Wee Smith. Back there underneath it, he calls fair catch, comes up on it at the 10, making the 11, and that's where Miami will have the ball. It's a 38-yard punt and effective one. This is what's happened to the game. Thompson put Wisconsin on the board first. Where to tight it? Then put Miami to the lead with his second field goal. Then Conley popped it into the end zone from a yard out. Carroll went 15 yards with a Craig Erickson pass. Carroll 10 yards with an Erickson pass. Hill three yards with an Erickson pass halftime. Third quarter, Werther, third field goal of the game. And then Aaron, a 16-yarder, tiptoeing the sideline. That's where we are. Alex Johnson carries. Alton bouncing loose. Johnson pursued it and looked like regained his fumble. Well, it's Crowell who's in there doing it. Shannon Crowell, number 20. And the quarter is over. So after three, Miami has control of things. 44 to three. I've got a... You've got 15 minutes to play in the ball game. It is a 44 to 3 score. Miami Hurricanes have control of things. And they come up now with a second down and eight. Kevin Gibbs, number 25, sets in behind Toretta. Toretta goes down the middle. Crowell makes the catch. And Shannon is out to the 35 yard line for another Miami first down. And now they have real estate to work. And so Toretta continues to find daylight down the middle for his uh, receivers. Toretta is doing a nice job. He had a pass picked off a little earlier, just under through the ball. But uh, the offensive coordinator, Bradkowski, does a nice job training these quarterbacks. And he should. His father is, was an NFL quarterback, Zeke, and now the quarterback coach of the New York Jets. This is good. And he isn't going anywhere. You know, the last time I did a ball game here at Madison, uh, the Wisconsin Badgers beat Nebraska 21 to 20. Nebraska was highly ranked. 
And there were several folks that made that uh, a point of conversation when I came to town Thursday. But I yep. think this proves I have no magic for the home <laughs> yeah. team. Well, there was some talk, too, about in 1981 when Wisconsin opened the season here at home against number one ranked Michigan. They have defeated the uh, Wolverine. That's not to be today. Second down and three. Right now, moving Gibbs around to get up there in the right place. Which one? That pass is caught by Aaron. And Doyle Aaron uh, will get up to around the 42. And here's some updates on scores. Colorado now extending it out 45-20 over Colorado State. Earl Bruce going to be 0-2. Uh, and Washington uh, in fourth quarter handling A&M. And North Carolina beats VMI. You got a young at North Carolina? Is that what you say? Got a freshman in North Carolina, yeah. Got them all over them. Ball is at the 42. Third down. Close to three now. <laughs> <laughs> Loretta's pass is thrown out of bounds. Incomplete. That'll bring up fourth down. Now the ball's about to go again. And I think in the last two weeks, including uh, last week, last week's game, Illinois, USC, we're going to have seen about 40 odd punts. We've seen more punting this week than uh, you'd see sometimes in a season. And we've seen a lot of good defenses, both Illinois and yeah. Southern Cal last year, Miami today, certainly a defensive team. And with us, as the defense gets ready to come on the field, is Sam Jankovich, who's been a friend of mine for a long, long time. And we're going to visit with Sam uh, as soon as we have the change of possession here and the commercial. All right. Brad Mayo accepts it for Wisconsin. It'll be first down Badgers at their own 22. Mr. Ian McKenzie. Hi, Mike. Crawford returns at quarterback now for Wisconsin. Started the game, had little success. Last two passes were picked off. And they set him down. Well, Sean Wilson, two quarters. Now Lionel is back. Option, Williams. Ran through one, but that's all. And goes out just about the line of scrimmage. Well, I said Sam Jankovic has been a friend of mine for a very long time. Actually, that's not quite the truth because the, the friendship got a little tedious when he left my alma mater to go to Miami after doing such a spectacular job for Washington State University. And then, lo and behold, he comes back and steals our coach. That's what I was going to say. You weren't talking that nice about him last spring. <laughs> but I don't blame him for either count. Sam, how did you go about getting uh, Dennis? Well, I'll tell you, Denny was very high on my list for a number of years, and uh, when Jimmy Johnson decided to leave, we definitely felt we had to keep somebody involved who understood the passing game and very pleased that Dennis Erickson is at the University of Miami. The uh, penalty flag has hit the deck again, and I think you're going to get another uh, whistle here against your team, Sam, but that's a holding call. No, it's going the other way against Wisconsin. This football team, it's composed in the main of, of young people from Florida, but in, in uh, several key positions, there are people from uh, other parts of the country, New Jersey, California, and, and uh, does that mean that Miami is going to become a national recruiting team? We now? are we're going to become a national recruiting team. Uh, Chief, our academic standards have increased significantly at the University of Miami. We are a private school, and I would think the breakdown right now is about 55-45. I was also reading an extended article the other day about your financial circumstance at Miami, and uh, while it's not glowing, it's in pretty good shape. It's in pretty good shape, Keith, but a full scholarship at the University of Miami right now is $18,000 wow. a year. And then, of course, we put an awful lot of emphasis in our academic support area where last year we had every football player graduate other than two, and the two that did not are about six credits away, but we allow our people to go to summer school, and we put a tremendous amount of uh, financial assistance as far as our tutorial program. Um, Lionel Crawford throwing the pass out of bounds. Incomplete now. With 11.43 to go in the game. I know at most private schools, Sam, uh, you say the tuition is $18,000. Yes. For, uh, you bring in a, a grant and aid for an athlete. That means the athletic department's got to pay the university $18,000. We have 18, to pay 000? the university $18,000. We're a little over $3.5 million that we're paying to the university in scholarship costs. 
The punt is away by Brecky. Low liner. Gets a pretty good bounce on it, and it kicks out of bounds on the far side with no return. And Wisconsin's going to come out of this exchange with pretty good field position. Be back in a moment. And this is Gibbs. Kevin Gibbs, freshman. A lot of freshmen playing today for both teams, Wisconsin being the younger. We're talking about uh, football with uh, the Miami Hurricanes athletic director, Sam Jankovich. Look at the schedule for this year. The Canes are going to be playing. And as you look at the schedule, it's worth noting that the Florida Gators are not on the schedule anymore. And uh, you only have two games remaining with Notre Dame. Big money makers. They're big money makers, Pete, and we feel it's most unfortunate that neither one of those series are going to continue because they are not only important as far as the University of Miami is concerned, but also, I think, extremely important for college football. Uh, you take, uh, there aren't too many national rivalries today, and the University of Miami-Notre Dame rivalry right now is probably one of the more prominent rivalries that we have throughout the entire country. Well, in 1990 now, you're broadening your, your perspective a tad. Uh, you, you start a series again here with California. You've got a home and home with them, right? But in 90, you open at Brigham Young. We open up BYU, and one of the things that we've tried to do, Keith, with our football schedule is not only have a north-south, but an east-west. And down the road, we will be playing UCLA, the University of Washington. We have Arizona and Arizona State on our schedule. Uh, this coming year, we bring on Iowa, which will be a home-and-away series. So I think we're very fortunate with some of the schools that we are putting on our schedule. And being the only real major tenant now of the Orange Bowl, I would presume uh, uh, that you don't have to knock too loudly on the door. Uh, no, that's right. And we are very pleased with the cooperation we are getting from the city. And right now, uh, after this year, we're going to put about $16 million worth of facility improvements, which really will make it an outstanding facility because there's an awful lot of tradition that goes along with the Orange Bowl. Would you say that, Bob? No question about that. It's one of the uh, great structures in this country. I want to talk to you about your baseball commentator, your analyst in baseball. <laughs> <laughs> for those of you who don't know it, Bob Greasy is the, is the analyst and commentator for the Miami baseball tele, uh, broadcast and telecast. <laughs> hey, I played baseball like, growing up. I loved it. You know? so, I go to all the games anyway, so, you know, why not go over there and put on a headset? I was just going to say that, Keith, before he was doing any commentary, he was always over there watching the baseball game. <laughs> yeah. And I think he was doing a little coaching on the side. <laughs> yeah, Ron Fraser done a pretty good job with that baseball program. He sure right? has, and they just returned from a trip to Russia, which was a great experience for uh, the University of Miami baseball players. We were supposed to be over there at the same time. That game last week was supposed to be in Moscow. Aaron moving down the sidelines is going to pick up another first down for the Hurricanes and so they continue to move the ball on down the field with 940 left to play in the ball game. Well do you think uh, obviously you're hoping that you can continue with that kind of a record but Sam that is not really a realistic record is it? No it's not a realistic record and I think that one of the things in this business is people uh, become very unrealistic and that's one of the concerns we have in Miami right now because for us to establish the type of football program we have, the ball has bounced right on a few occasions, Keith, and we've won some games. And last year, the ball didn't bounce right against Notre Dame, and we got beat. And so we just have to be very realistic and make certain that people remember where this program was 10 or 12 years ago because some of the greatest powers in the world have dropped off significantly a year or two. Well, everything in life is cyclical. That's right. Well, that's one of the pressures, too, that on uh, on Dennis Erickson coming in, taking over after Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson's legacy, five uh, January 1 bowl games in a row. Five years he was there, five years on January 1, they went to bowl games. Toretta now, with Gibbs having given him a first down and goal at the four-yard line, sets up the game. Looks like they're going to stick in the end zone again. Gibbs is cut down after he picks up a couple of yards. And uh, this will make it 50 or more, depending on what they do on the extra point try. Toretta now is five of seven for 88 yards. And the ball is resting just inside the three. Oh, 
Loretta's showing some poise. He looks like he's been out there all of his life. Doesn't he? One eighty yards. Very good. One eighty yards. Set. Go. Uh oh, somebody went the wrong way. That's what happens <laughs> when somebody goes the wrong way. And Tim Connect, the strong safety, gets the stop for the Badgers. Sam. Always fun to see you. Good luck. You've done a wonderful job everywhere you've been. And I don't well, doubt that what you're going to keep it up at Miami. Well, we're surely going to try, Keith. And I just can't say enough about Dennis Erickson because him taking this task on kind of tells you the kind of competitor. And to you and Bob and to ABC, best of luck uh, this year. And we hope to see you before the season's over. Well, comes in. Good. Thank you. Sam Jankovic, the athletic director at the University of Miami. Who's resting easy. He's going to have a nice trip home. Third down and goal now after that loss back to the 11-yard line. And Toretta may have burned his clock. Did. Sam said he was out in uh, Hawaii last Christmas. Uh, the basketball team was in Hawaii, and uh, Dennis Erickson's the Washington State Cougars was out there. He says he was kind of scouting him then not knowing that in a couple of months that is uh, Jimmy Johnson as head coach would be leaving. He thought that maybe Johnson might be leaving in a couple of years or something and had his eye on Erickson but didn't realize it would happen so quickly. Near the conclusion of the broadcast we will participate in the 19 year tradition of selecting a Chevrolet most valuable player from each of, the te each of these teams. Toretta to the end zone. Crowell stumbled a little bit got tangled up a little bit with Greg Thomas and it was a half a step from having the ball nestle in his hand. So they're turned away there. But the Chevrolet will donate a thousand dollar scholarship to each school to assist students in pursuing their education as part of their participation in college football. They have been 19 years at it. They helped a lot of young people. Fourth and goal, and they'll go. They don't need any more points, so word is not coming in. Down the middle, it is incomplete. Penalty flag, Crowell, the intended receiver. Thomas covering, and the back judge threw the flag out of the end zone. Interference, and carries the first down. Good protection by the University of uh, Miami. Man is all over the receiver before the ball is there. That's 27 Thomas. Croyell is leaving the field, uh, shaken up on the play. Aid Sponberg is making his report uh, to the Wisconsin Board of Regents uh, at the end of this week past uh, and, and told them that. Uh, they thought, uh, or at least he felt they were going to reduce the athletic department deficit here at the University of Wisconsin by as much as $400,000 if, if they could pull that off, cutting back and, and producing new revenue. They could wind up in the black at the end of this year, maybe as much as a couple of hundred. That would be a big help. Toretta rolls out and throws incomplete. Get a first down with that interference call, so they're operating now on the six-yard line where it's second down and goal, and Eddie Fletcher was defending on that play. And uh, Crowell is trying to shake off the aches and pains of that last collision. They have developed here at the University of Wisconsin one of the absolutely tremendous athletic center bearing the name of Dave McLean, the late coach. Yep. Davis here from 78 to 85. This is Gibbs. Touchdown, Miami. Well, young Gibbs getting a lot of playing time. Slipped out to the left and just stuck it in the end zone. Gibbs is about the fifth string running back. They don't have, really don't have fullbacks in this one back set. They're all halfbacks, and uh, yeah, he's out of Coral Gables. Right. Right. Coral Gables, Gables High School. Yeah. Where does extra point? 
is good. At seven minutes and 57 seconds to play in the game, it is now 51 to three, Miami. And the driver up over the hill. Boom, all of a sudden there it is in your car windshield. It's quite striking. Carl Patetti now will kick it off for the Hurricanes. And coming up to pick it up is Derek Schaefer. We've got two 84s out there for uh, uh, Wisconsin. One is Jim Bourne and the other is Derek Schaefer. Take your pick. We think that was Schaefer. <laughs> 20th anniversary special coming up Monday night here on ABC Sports at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. That's a walk down memory lane with all of the shenanigans over the 20 years of Monday night football. And uh, then it's followed by this. The Giants and the Redskins. And the Giants have got to start the season. In fact, they're going to be, I guess, without the whole Joe Morris Joe the whole Morris. season. Yeah. I would think that show is going to be a great show. One hour show. Like I said, it depends on how they've edited it. Yeah. <laughs> Lionel Crawford trying to option down the line and Jimmy Jones won't allow it. Passing through Jimmy's neighborhood, he puts him right on the ground and the Colorado Buffaloes now. Well, look out for them, I tell you, they're pretty good. And the Washington Huskies and the Huskies and the Buffaloes are going to get together and Crawford now is down hurt on the field. So he took, took a pretty good look. There were three of those big linemen that pounced him when he was trying to run the option. So the young man from Houston is shaken up in timeout for the moment, taken for him at 7.36 to play. What? Lionel Crawford, starting quarterback for the University of Wisconsin. Well, he gets, uh, he gets into a little tug of war with uh, Jimmy Jones. 63. Jimmy is 6'4 and 260. And whenever you get twisted like that, usually it's an ankle or a, or a knee that's stuck in the uh, in the turf that gets twisted. But he's walking all right. Yeah, when it looks comes like off. maybe one of the follow-up hitters hit him up in the shoulder of the head. Maybe just got uh, some uh, flies or butterflies going through the head or something. Six hundred pounds fell on him. So. May have been what happened. It'll be Badger's ball, second down, and twelve from the eighteen. Sean Wilson back in the game at quarterback, replacing Crawford. going to run a little option but again it's spoiled as the uh, hurricane defensive front just absolutely this, blew this, apart this defensive, defensive team just sets the tempo for the you know one of the, the outstanding statistics that the hurricanes over the last five years is their road record to Keith we had it up a little bit earlier they're 20 the last five years they are 22 and 2 on the road they had won uh, 19 straight games before losing at Notre Dame last year Jimmy Johnson had the Canes believing that and enjoying the away games. He said they were actually uh, look forward to playing in places like LSU and Michigan and Florida State and Notre Dame. He convinced them it was a business trip. That's Jimmy Henderson carrying the ball for Wisconsin. Gets it, back to about the original line of script. And it was interesting out here yesterday watching the University of Miami practice uh, to see if uh, Dennis Erickson was going to change anything I mean this is a loose group the University of Miami when they go on the road they practice the day before the game uh, they are really loose uh, a lot of the defensive players out just dancing uh, loosen the uh, around uh, going all over the field and Dennis has not changed the thing uh, let me put him in a comfort zone and uh, Erickson says if it's not broke don't fix it Brad Brecky punch good nice punt. deep back to Pee Wee Smith and Smith is taken down. 45-yard punt, four-yard return. That is Brecky's 12th punt. That ties a Wisconsin school record for punting. Craig Hudson made the tackle for Wisconsin. 
at 545 to go in the ball game. Well Nebraska got things in gear finally against Northern Illinois. Oklahoma won over Baylor and Colorado beat Colorado State. All of the big eight. The Virginia knocked down Penn State today. Syracuse looks like uh, Coach Max going to have a pretty good team in Syracuse again this year. Joe Cole is now the quarterback for Miami. First action of the day. A redshirt freshman from uh, Jupiter, Florida, 6'2", 180. And Alex Johnson is back in the lineup for the Miami Hurricane. So a lot of people now starting to get some playing time. The crowd, 38,646, which is the second smallest crowd since 1968 Utah State was here. Last year they had 38-2-3-0 against Western Michigan. So the attendance on a rainy, cool day in Madison, not anything to write home about. From the 41-yard line, Alex Johnson pops into the middle and picks up a first down at the Wisconsin 48. In being here, yesterday wandering around and just kind of listening to the sounds of the city he didn't have the feeling that there was a whole lot of anticipation on campus about this ball game or about this season so there are some changes that need to be made in a lot of ways I suppose and not necessarily just in the coaching area this is gift and he's tracked down and brought down short of the line of scrimmage by Scott Boyke, sophomore from Elmhurst, Illinois. That Louisville won again, Arch Dellenberger. Did they? The score went by. I just yep. Howard Schnellenberger was the man that started the Hurricanes in 1979, really turned the program around. Yep. For five years, he was here, and then and then went on to, uh, was signed for a deal with the USFL uh, professional football, and then the net fell through, went to Louisville, and then Jimmy Johnson came on for five years and really bettered whatever uh, Howard had accomplished. Howard won a national championship. Jimmy won one in five years. And you really have to wonder, uh, Keith, if this job, with the Hurricanes is not uh, one of those jobs where you come in, you're successful for four or five years, and then it's a it's a uh, launching pad to the pros. Well, if it is, in fact, that, uh, then I don't think Sam's going to have a lot of trouble finding college coaches who'll take it, because uh, if that becomes the pattern, and it certainly could. And what Sam was saying too in, in hiring Erickson is that he needed someone whose offense was exciting, that the entertainment dollar in Miami is very tough, and it's not enough just to win, but to come in and continue to score a lot of points. And certainly, Erickson's offense uh, can do that. There are times, though, when I think you get certain points and certain time left in the game. Some of the high school associations around the country have it. You know, you flag it and go home. <laughs> You mean back the 10 run rule? Yeah. Back him up. On third down now and long. Third about 14. They stay on the ground and Johnson loses his footing. Squirted out from under it. Never did rain really hard today, but it rained uh, a goodly bit enough to get everything pretty wet. No, the traction remains good on the rug. Ball is resting just short of the 45. And Tim Kalal is in to punt it. Longview, Washington, he went to Miami from Wenatchee Junior College. About almost as far as you can, as you can trap. High hanger. Mayo backs up for Wisconsin on a fair catch call at the 14-yard line. 42-yard punt, no return. Lou Holtz pictured there, brings the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame into Ann Arbor next Saturday against Bo Schimbeckler's Michigan Wolverines. 3.30 Eastern time next Saturday here on ABC Sports. They're just, that's, those are two very, very, very good Outstanding teams. teams with good quarterbacks, the whole program, uh, head coaches, they don't miss a beat. They, uh, they know what's going on. On 
first down, Henderson. Bang it away for about five yards. You know, Keith, I'm reminded we were at the Big Ten football kickoff luncheon in, uh, well, I guess it was, was in August. Don Morton was uh, there, and they have all the coaches get up and speak. You really hope this guy makes it. He is really a nice man. He's very well-spoken. He was uh, at the podium, and he said uh, he admitted some problems at Wisconsin. He says, uh, we can't, my, we didn't win any games. He says, we can't, we can't win on the road. We can't win at home. And he says, my failure as a coach, he felt was he couldn't find a place for his team to play. And uh, you really hope that he gets this program turned around. He's a likable young man and uh, was successful at North Dakota State for uh, six or seven years, won the championship of Division II, uh, went on to Tulsa and was successful out there and really has his hands full in the last couple of years and uh, getting this program turned around. But he does have a lot of young players. And he, uh, as we said earlier, he's doing it out uh, without the uh, this quick fix and that's with the junior college transfer. <laughs> John Wilson lobs it out off the fingertips of Craig Hudson trying to touch it over the shoulder of the defender. Got it on his hands, but running at full speed couldn't reel it in. shaken up in that last series putting Wilson back into the ball game on second down and ten we see Wilson take the snap and he is sacked on a full scale blitz by number 51 Bukasa Colombo and Mike Adamley with information about Crawford. Keith I imagine today could even be more disastrous for Wisconsin had they lost Lionel Crawford for any extended period of time but fortunately for Don Morton just a sprained thumb for Lionel Crawford and he should be back ready to play next week. Okay, sir. Third and uh, close to 16. Looks like he picks up a first down on a completion intercepted. to intercepted. freshman. Oh, is it intercepted? No, it's not. Sorry. Not. Looking at the wrong guy. Aaron Brown had it in his hands, and I it was a Miami man right there. Yeah. Looking and away from the play and so he picked <laughs> it off. <laughs> it is a first down. <laughs> the MVPs. Wesley Carroll. Seven catches 112 yards two touchdowns five punt returns for 122 yards not a bad day Eddie Fletcher for Wisconsin had an interception and 10 tackles during the time he was in the ball game and Wilson scrambling will pick up about three yards on that particular carry a check on the amount of thousand dollars will be donated by Chevrolet to each of the university's general scholarship funds to further assist qualified students in advancing their education. And so this one is history. The Miami Hurricanes under new coach Dennis Erickson, new quarterback Craig Erickson opened their season successfully against Wisconsin.